Ready? Oh, we're not. Get ready. And we're here. Hey. Welcome to Friday. Doing a little bit later in the day today um, because Darcy's not here, but he will be here. We hope so. We, <laughs> we hope so. so. He may not make it. Yeah. Um, but welcome to Friday. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, where we play new games on old systems. Yes. Specifically, 40 year old systems, 40, <laughs> 41 year old systems. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be playing some Atari 2600 homebrew games today, as per always, because it's zero page homebrew. <laughs> um, so, welcome. Oh, Arena Foot's here. Hey, Arena Hello. Foot. Hello, Blue Swimmer, Fizzy Wizzy, everybody else who's listening and not typing as yeah. well. I won't out you. Don't worry. <laughs> Somebody called me out one time for that. <laughs> Like, don't, don't say names that aren't typing. <laughs> okay, I won't, I won't. Um, so we've got uh, four fun games okay, today. Okay, awesome. Um, I like variety. Yes. Yeah. Two balloon-based games. Okay. Which is a little weird that there's two balloon-based games. Floating? Game. Floating games? Floaty balloon-based okay. games. It's not like make your balloon animals yep, on the Atari 2600. Pump up. <laughs> yeah, make your own balloon animals. <laughs> yeah. Pump them up. Pick your color. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm going to do dark. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the first one's Balloon Trip, which is brand new. Okay. New, new, new. Okay. Uh, the second one, uh, not the second balloon one, but the second game is Up with two Ps. U P P. That sounds like it should be a balloon game. It does. <laughs> but most games are about flying and That's true. on the 2600 That's true. or in yeah. some way. Um, and the third game is Ball Blazer, 2600. Um, and the last game is called Crazy Balloon, of which there's an actual cartridge. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, so that is one game that I got in my last um, unboxing that I have not posted yet because I haven't finished it, mm -hmm. but I will very soon. Cool. And that is what is currently on display on the Atari 2600. Oh, yeah, you can see it on the webcam. Video. Yep, yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, right there. Kind of. <laughs> Everything's backwards. There we go. Yeah, I'm a little confused. Yeah, <laughs> so I put it on display on the 2600 there, nice. but the first three games are um, are ROMs. Okay. Um, but we will get to those. Um, just uh, some updates. Um, some people have already heard, but we will be going to Portland Retro Gaming Expo in October. Always just a fun time. Attending, not, not doing no. anything. Just, just yeah. If you want to say hi, you can come yeah. up and say hi. We don't have a booth. No, we're not giving a like talk. That. No, we'll just be. Maybe, there. maybe next year. <laughs> Who knows? I doubt it. But, <laughs> um, but I will be doing. Uh, we will be doing some interviews of uh, some developers, mm. programmers, and also distributors of homebrew. So if you're one of those people, who either make it or sell it. Um, drop me a line, james at zeropagehomebrew.com. Mm. And we've already, we're always, uh, pff, we're already going to be talking to Al from Atari Age and John Champeau uh, from Champ Games, who did Mappy, Conquest of Mars, Ladybug, uh, Scramble, and also Super Cobra Arcade. So he's done big, big games. Mm. So we'll be doing those two interviews. And many more as we reach out. Because I haven't actually re reached out to any anybody yet. Um, just those two people. No. So far. So far. So far. So. We've got a lot of time to go between now and what? October. October, yeah. yeah. So, so I'll good. probably yeah. stop saying this next show. Because <laughs> you don't want to hear this from now till October. Mm. Light, nice list of PRGE peeps there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Big names already. I'm very happy to be talking with them yeah. coming up in October. Yeah, cool. And so you guys will be able to see those interviews on the YouTube channel afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be lots of fun. Um, and I got a follow-up from Iceposta about a game that we played uh, recently, Man Goes Down. Mm -hmm. That was the one where the guy kind of disappeared because he had a problem with his brain. He had, uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he had a medical issue. Okay. So he stopped working on the game and never picked it back up again mm. after many years and everybody's really upset. Mm. Not like upset at him, but upset that the game's not yeah. getting finished. Yeah, no. Um, but um, there was an artwork contest for it. 
Okay. But the game never got released, so the artwork was never used. Oh, I and see. And the artwork winner was Nathan Strum. Um, and I supposed to got a hold of him mm. and asked him, did you ever get your prizes? Because there was prizes for it. One of the prizes was an Atari Vox. That's the thing that keeps the high scores. Okay, yeah. And does the voices. Yes. And the other prize was the actual cart of the game. Mm. But the, ga the game was never released. Released, yeah. Um, and Nathan got back to him uh, saying, I did get the Atari Vox for the prize, mm. which is, you know, was out. So that's really good. Um, but there are never any carts made, of course. Yeah, so the you game never get the cartridge. So you would yeah. never get the cartridge. Um, uh, but Alex, um, the programmer of Man Goes Down, did send him a couple of his Vectrex games. Because he was mostly known for as a Vectrex programmer. Um, uh, as a thank you. So he did, he did get a prize. Oh, he that's did good. get his prizes. That's so good. that's good. Even though yeah. it didn't get actually released. Yeah. Um, Houston has Ed Fry's. This is Arena Foot in here. Houston has Ed Fries, Daryl Spice Jr., and maybe Jared Gray West. Jared Gray West, uh, Spies in the Night. Ooh, Lost Cat. We have not played Lost Cat. We're always up for a cat-based uh, cat game. Cat-themed games Ugh. go over well. I wonder if there's, e there's like, we could have a cat-themed night. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. I'll yeah. have to look up some cat games. Yeah. Well, there's at least one homebrew cat game. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, there's got to be more than one. There's got to <laughs> yeah. be more than one. There are a in lot this of cat day, lovers out there. In this day yeah. and age of the internet and cats, oh, cat memes. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. All those cat videos. It's going to be some cat fans yeah. intersecting yeah. with c programmers. Yeah. Strong strong plays of the game can can be rewarded by giving our cats treats, too. You know? <gasps> Ooh, if we get a high yeah. score. High score. Pixel and Atari can get, yeah. get a treat. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Lost Cat is like the Anguna game you played. Well, that sounds good to me. An RPG cat game? <gasps> I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sold. Uh, are you supposed to... Hi, James. I'm late to the show. Nah. <laughs> nah? Okay. Welcome. Why are you supposed to... <laughs> I don't know what the nah is about, but... Good on you. Um, yeah, so let's get into the first game. <laughs> Which is Balloon Trip. Okay. Which was just, it was just released. Um, the first release was July 1st. We're on the 6th, so less than a week ago, it was announced. Cool. Um, it's made by Blue Swimmer, who is in, I'm pointing to something that people can't see. Yeah, yeah. Our chat is in front of us yeah, yeah. on a big screen. Yeah, on um, our TV. So, so yeah. that's what I'm pointing to. Blue Swimmer is in the channel. Uh, hello, Witty Wow, here in support of Blue Swimmer. Excellent. Yeah. That's awesome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Blue Swimmer. <laughs> Say hi to Blue Swimmer, everyone. Yeah. Um, and his latest, he did an update since the first release, adding a couple more things in. So that's exciting. It's a lot, a uh, lot more to it now. Okay. So it'll be a, uh, a better playthrough than okay. the, than the original one. Um, let's see. Yeah, it is based on, um. The NES game uh, Balloon Fight. We've played that. You know, where they're, it's joust, essentially. <laughs> um, I'm not very good at that game. <laughs> <laughs> where you get two balloons. I was a little scared remember? that that was the game we were playing. We're not. I'm not it's very not that good. Game. I'm not very good at that game. <laughs> it's not Balloon Fight. Yeah, but that's a fun game. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's like based joust. off of it, though. It's No, no. Uh, oh, I'll it's get not. to it. It's, oh, okay. it's tangentially related to okay. that game. Um, yeah, Balloon Fight is joust with balloons on the NES, and he's yes. got little creatures, and you pump up your balloons. There's two balloons to pop, and you pop one, and, and pop, pop two, yeah, and then and you, that's how you, then you, you win. Then that's yeah. how you die. Or beat your, beat your competitor. Or yes. Yeah. Um, and, but there is a sub game within that. Like, mm. there's two parts to it. Okay. One was Balloon Fight, and the other one was Balloon Trip. I don't know if you remember mm. that one. Mm -hmm. Where you float mm -hmm. through dangers and pop balloons. Yes. And I always thought that was a that was a really fun. Aspect I enjoyed to that. It. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah. So that's Maybe. what this is based gotcha. on. Gotcha. So okay. it's the balloon trip part of it. Okay. Um, so first, let's take a look at the NES version of mm -hmm. Balloon Trip, so you guys can compare what it looks like. Let me just bring it up here. One second. 
while I get it prepared. Okay, I think we're good now. So, uh, there's Balloon Fight title screen. So there's the, um, there's the little guy. He's got his balloons and he's, and he's popping, popping balloons, avoiding mm -hmm. obstacles. Mm -hmm. He didn't do very well. <laughs> Not well at all. Um, oh, and Lost Cat is going to be in volume two of the homebrew book. Yeah, Arena yes. Foot is an author. And if you haven't seen his book, I constantly talk about it because he's constantly in the chat. But anyway, <laughs> I did a review on it last this week, actually. Um, so he did this game, uh, this book, um, the Atari 2600 Homebrew Companion Volume 1. So Lost Cat is in Volume 2, so I better play cat it. Butt. And here's our cat, Atari. Yes, he heard cat and he came running. So that is what the NES version of the game looks like. Um, so it's got balloons you can pop. There's things to avoid. There's little balloons that, a little bubbles that float up from the water. Mm. And there's water at the bottom. And if he goes low enough, there's a little fish that chomps on him. Mm. Kind of like in Joust, where oh, yes. well, there's the hand that, that grabs that, you that and pulls you. That will jump up and grab, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's what the NES balloon fight looks like. Mm. So let's take a look at what the Atari 2600 can do. <laughs> so let's switch over. And load it up. Mm. Oh. Did oh. you introduce your Genesis arcade power stick? We've been play we've been using this for the last two the last two? shows. Yeah. It's I nice. don't think I've been involved in the last two. Very so. nice. Yeah. I've I've been liking it for a lot of games. Yeah. So I think it's gonna do really well for most games. Yeah. Um maybe not platformers. I'm not too keen on the the wide, you know travel stick, of the yeah, stick yeah the, yeah the travel the movement it's just too you can't get really fast reactions yeah but for like um yeah it doesn't like the intro to balloon trip so you may want to look into that um to make sure it has a nice 262 lines or or something no now my screen's all crazy um uh, oh some more people elemental burrows woodnator plays welcome 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 Hello, Philo Minecrafters. <laughs> I guess there's some Minecrafters in the crowd. So there you go. Um, let me turn up the volume on here. There we go. And dead. And, and immediately dead. <laughs> now, unfortunately, there's no reset from the joystick. So oh, I will have to get up every time okay. to press it because the button is for to flap or to to flap your arms to go up gotcha so if that was the reset it would just automatically reset because you're constantly pressing the buttons fair enough so there's the balloons and there's the hazards and don't get too low to the water <clears throat> oh it's it's hello right? das richter yes you're welcome for doing uh, for us <laughs> doing the reviews it says hello thanks for these uh reviews you're very welcome. I would say more. I guess there there are reviews. We do we do tell, we do say oh if we like them or not or what we like about them. Um, I am going to be doing some proper edited reviews up soon. Uh, the first one's going to be uh, Wall Jump Ninja. Oh, it's getting faster. It does get faster. That's cool. I like that. I like that. So let me go over what the game is all about. So yeah, like I said, this was first released by Blue Swimmer on July 1st of this year, like five days ago. Um, over the past week, I've been working on a port of the balloon trip mode of the NES game Balloon Fight. The game is pretty simple. Just avoid the electric sparks and uh, pop the balloons. And when don't get too close to the water, the fish are pretty hungry after all. Currently, there's three difficulties that can be chosen with the select button. Oh. Scoring works by ah, popping whoops. balloons, which score, popping balloons, which scores 30 points, and simply surviving. Um, and he has updated that since then. Yeah, it's a lot more, a lot more interesting than Flappy, like the Flappy Bird clones, where mm. there's, you just go through openings. That's it. 
There's, yes. there's no very little risk reward. There's actually only risk in Flappy. There's no reward other than not dying. Um, yeah, this is. I was so happy when I he announced this game yeah. because, because we both really liked playing oh, it. On, I on love the this NES, game um, on the NES game, and it's a kind of the perfect game for an Atari. I think. It is. It's perfect. It's, it's one button. It's, it's, it's not it's, complex. It's a simple game, and and it's yep. actually a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun already. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I never realized they were electric oh. sparks. I always thought they were twinkling stars. So well, they could be twinkling stars. Yeah, but electric sparks makes maybe a little bit. More oh sense. yes, and know. the joystick does move them back and forth if you want. But there, <laughs> ah, but there is mom <laughs> when you do move them back and forth. There is momentum, and I found it's really tough to control. Like, like you, he floats you start, forward and back. You start getting out of control a little bit. Yeah. And, well, but that's you, good to know. but you may need it in an emergency. haven't even touched the joystick. No. Yes, you would, because at You may need points, it in an emergency. When you get really tight, yeah. yeah. And there's the fish. Yellow fish. Yeah, you bit me right on the ass. <laughs> uh, so, version 2 updates, which is the one we're playing, which was released uh, yesterday. Uh, this adds a couple of things I hope will make the game less repetitive, which it did. It added a, a lot to it. Added higher difficulty levels. As you progress further, more sparks are able to spawn on a single scan line, which is better, instead of the old hard limit of one. And since he'll, he has oh, them on the same does. scan oh, line now, oh, yeah, that, does. Sorry. <laughs> um, that brings up the possibility of moving the sparks as they did in the original NES game. Yes. And that'll add a lot more difficulty to it and a lot more um, interesting higher levels. Because they're not just, oh, once you've established where you are in that, that line. Will that kill me, that blue thing? No, probably? no, it pauses the screen. Really? Yep. Which, at this point, because there's not a ton of balloons like there is in the original, it kind of just, you just sit there for a while. Um, but it's a good add-on for future use, I think. Mm. Um, this is the biggest one, biggest thing he added was the balloon meter. And it's in the top right-hand corner. Um... You can see it's like the green bar. It goes up when you get balloons, mm -hmm. and when you miss balloons, it goes down. Oh, really? So you want oh, so Sorry, you I just, just missed, missed one. one. And it's and when you fill it up completely, you go on a balloon spree. And the get <laughs> oh, oh, you avoided them. Um, the screen fills up with the balloons. I have not been able to do that yet. So that'll be a good goal for this for this stream, is to try and get the balloons all the way up to the top. Ooh. Oh, I so have, close! I have found staying either middle or middle low because you can go up faster than you can go down. Yeah, but um, if you have a bunch of balloons in a row, you're not going to suddenly go down and up because of because of the momentum. So yeah. it, it does get hard. It does get it does. hard. And with this one, you know, like the NES one, there were a ton of balloons, so there really wasn't a point in getting all of them. You were just trying to get as many as you can. Yes. With this one, you, you sort of want to try and get every balloon as, it, Ev as, as everyone. you come, come yeah. across it. So, so the gameplay is a little bit different. The reset? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I haven't tried any of the difficulty. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm I haven't tried any of the difficulty away. levels yet, so I don't know. It does get harder, though. See, that's why you'd have to go back and forth to make sure you get all the balloons. <laughs> See the momentum? It's like crazy. Yeah. Oh! I was doing much better last time. <laughs> Better not going back and forth, to be honest. Yeah, at least is. in the initial stages when you're moving a little bit more slowly. Yeah. You've got plenty of time to kind of play with the physics of it and move. And the, th the third thing he added this was the bubbles, which I already talked about. While these don't come out of the ocean like in the NES game, they serve the same purpose and stop the scrolling for a few seconds. So when there's a. That would be very useful for when. There is a balloon when you're going fast, and there's balloons on the screen that you need to get so that they wouldn't just whip by mm -hmm. you. Um, but if there's no balloons on the screen, there's no point in getting the stopping bubble because you're just going to sit there mm -hmm. and just wait for it to, to be finished. Um, Arena Foot asked, What is the gauge in the upper right corner? Uh, so, yep, yeah, that is the balloon meter. 
and we want to get that right to the top. I think I got it to three quarters when I was um, playing this on an emulator. Uh, oh, a whole bunch of balloons. Oh, 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 about just up. Oh my God. Oh. oh my God, so many balloons. Yeah. That's kind of a detriment because well, they'll pass by. Well, you're losing them as they go by, but I mean. And he says, hope you enjoy. And yeah, we, we are. are. Yeah. And and when the speed kicks up, it really it's... changes the the difficulty for sure. Oh yeah. Are you guys playing in a PAL TV? No, this is an NTS. You know what? Okay, that's what happened when it cut out. Um, my system can handle PAL games, um, but we are playing on an NTSC um, uh, television. So it can pass the PAL signal out of the Atari because the Atari doesn't care um, as far as I know. And it goes to my Frame Meister, which can handle any kind of input and translates that out to a 1080 or 720p um, no matter what it's thrown at it. Um, so if this was originally programmed in PAL for PAL scan lines, that makes sense that it would flip out when it starts because the menu was in NTSC and then it's doing um, a scan line change, which would made my screen blue and which everybody saw as we turned it on. Um, so that makes sense why it did that. <laughs> Whoa. I couldn't decide no, like which not. one to go for. I would have gone for the top because you just go tap, 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 and you're no, right at I, the top. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering if there was a way to get both of them, but I don't think there is. He says, that's odd. The game is designed for NTSC. Oh, okay. You threw me off with the whole PAL thing. Um, yeah, I don't know why it flips out. There must be... Um, like, it's fine once we started playing. Um, just when we first started it... Um, it, did, it did blank. It, it, did, it, it did blanked blank. out. So yeah. you may have some code at the beginning where it's like f running through some crazy scan lines, like either zero or too many of them where you are executing some code and it's not drawing anything on the screen in the meantime I would have to take it into Stella and watch the do a control L for to see the scan line numbers oh very close yeah if you ever want to if you're ever in trouble, you just pound the... Look at it. Do that, and you go right <laughs> to the top, yeah. and you're safe until one comes, that is. Oh. Oh, good job. Oh, I think I need, like, two more. Oh, you're very close. Nope. Oh! Whoa! Oh! oh. <laughs> Looks like I got the bubble. It paused. And oh. then you just keep flew. Can you do the reset? Yeah. Sorry. No. Yeah, you do... It would be really good for you to figure out a way to reset the game without having to get up. But it can't be just the button. It would have to be like a um, some combo, like either pause it, which would be a little annoying. Like pause the game. Like mm -hmm. don't accept. Yeah, you could do that. You could do like pause the game for like three seconds while you wait to stop pressing the mm -hmm. button, and then allow the button to restart. Maybe not three seconds, maybe like two or something. So it's not too long. So you die. Um, it doesn't accept any input to reset the game. And then after like two seconds, it accepts input. And then the button allows to restart the game. Hmm. So that would solve that problem. Yeah, that was so close. Yeah. I almost got... Well, that's where the physics of it sometimes screws you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you put a little too much power and... I should have not just... I should have gone for it. It was just too risky. But I wanted to get it. You want, well, you want to see what happens. I do. I think I was one away, but... Mm, one or two, It's hard I to think. tell because the meter is... It doesn't go up a pixel every time you get one. It's like a pixel every two. See, it didn't go up there, but it probably will go up... 
There it Oh, there. it went up a fair amount. Oh, watch Whoa. out. Oh. oh, see? Panic. Yeah, panic yeah. sets in. The panic sets you in. Start the, going a little crazy. Can the you yellow Pac Man it? fish jumps up. Yep, Pac Man fish. Yeah. Oh, also, he updated the graphics from the first version of the, the Sparks. <laughs> they weren't moving in the first version. Mm. They were just static. And mm. now they're much, much... No, they're really nice. I, I like it. Yeah, so they're closer and, to the and NES. And they look very, very close to the original. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's no point in... Get oh, now there's kind of a point, but I'd have to move. Will the uh, fish still get you? I bet oh, it yeah. will. Oh, yeah. Very nice. It didn't pause the fish... The fish came out, I think, yeah. in the second to last game. Yeah. So the fish isn't paused. Just, just the sparks. Or the twinkly stars. Yeah. They're nice. They're, yeah. They work as twinkly stars. stars. And, well, yeah, I don't think many people in balloons will be <laughs> floating past stars. So. No. Although I'm not sure where the sparks would come from either, but that's okay. Yeah. In the, in the mean, night sky. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, the whole uh, video games in general back then were just oh, insane. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know how I'm going to get this. Especially with this. Nope. Oh, close. <laughs> See, once you start once you start moving around, it gets a little, a little crazy. Oh, yeah. I did notice the twinkling stars immediately. I think I... Did I mention that for, like something to to add to the game i mean it's an obvious thing i think i said yeah you could add it but it's like super obvious see that would be a that's a good place to to get the bubble is when well it's not super speedy yet no so there's no point in getting that one You'll just be sitting around i did mention it okay yeah that's cute and this is one of the homebrews that I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. R <laughs> right away. It is it, fun. And it's, and it's, it's so much fun. And it's a, like one of those simple homebrews where like, it works. Like the game is totally <sighs> fine immediately. Oh, 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 so many, so many. Oh! oh, oh. Nope. See, there's so many that I'm missing now. Oh, yeah. it still went up. I'm still yeah. okay. Are you sure you're losing them if they pass you? Uh, that's what it says. Oh, 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 oh. Oh! oh no. Oh. That was close. That was very close. That was really close. Do you want another start? Yeah, I'll do one more and then you can no, play again. No, that's fine. I got a lot of turns in. <sighs> Is the joystick button too noisy for you guys out there or is it like totally fine and the video games masking the the clicking oh uh, okay <laughs> i'll let you have it <laughs> right. i was just i was trying to get that balloon down there ready yep the joystick taps yes is it annoying or is it like totally fine because it is it is noisy <laughs> it is it is very noisy. definitely more noisy than the uh, regular genesis control so. Oh yeah, they're silent. Totally silent. Get that balloon! Gotcha! You could possibly make the balloons a little f fatter. Maybe it's my screen, but they're like skinny balloons. Because you do have a couple more pixels to work with there. The balloons? The, the green balloons? The green balloons. Oh no, I think you they're You like fine. that they're okay? Yeah. I mean, actually, they're they're pretty normal, I guess, yeah. Actually, probably making them one more yeah, pixel would be uh -huh. too fat. Uh -huh. uh, you have to get 15 to fully, fully, fully fill the gauge. Though missing one lowers the balloon count. The meter divides by three for five sections. Uh, okay, so that's so I'm gonna count. So that's one, two. Actually, I'll count down. I like that he flaps his hand. It's so cute. <laughs> Super cute. I think that's adorable. And really good colors. I like the colors. I feel like he's dressed like James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. If, if he had, but he would need <laughs> if a, he white, had a white shirt. He, he would need a white shirt, but still, the red and blue is very cute. I think. Um, also, I don't know if you want to do this. I'm just throwing suggestions out, but you could extend the balloons up. 
like one pixel or two pixels and make a little white because it looks like i don't know looks like ears red ears ah ah you got me Oh, the red ears, yeah. Because when you said the balloons, I think the green balloons are fine. I like them. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but the, the yeah, his, his head. It, but I guess, is there a limit to the width of the... The width, but not height. Oh, not the height. Okay. So you can make a character the whole height of the yeah. screen if you want. Ah, but if you make them long, they would probably look like bunny ears, so... Um, not long, but like a white, um, a little white string for the balloons. I don't uh, know. It's cute. He I says, like yeah, it does look kind of like Mickey ears. <laughs> I mean, they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> You're so critical. Uh, I think they're so cute. <laughs> just making observations. The rest of them's awesome. Yeah, no, I, um, like, I like him. And the, the, and the hand flapping, I just love. Yeah. I love that. It's really it's sweet. It's yeah. The, really yeah, yeah, the hat color, the shirt color. Yeah. The, the blue and red work really well together. It's really nice. The overall color scheme of the whole game is really nice. I have a question oh, for you. Oh, two. Oh, go ahead. Two line. Oh, I don't know if it's two line display kernels. It does look like a two line. Um, but yeah, yeah, it should be fine if you do one, a two line white coming out the top of his hat in two spots. <laughs> you want to go? Yep. Yeah. What's your question? I had a question. Restart. Uh, just... Restart. 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 <laughs> you just need to to wire this up to trigger that switch you know? <laughs> yeah no. or you can hold down it's the probably button. a mechanical <laughs> it is a mechanical switch so it is um yeah. uh, what was i gonna say oh atari 2600 games was yes. there such a thing as choosing or customizing some aspect of the visuals on the game like i want my player to be have a blue hat or a green hat like were, were they at would they at are you can you think of a game where there was some sort of choice Ooh, there must have been one um like choose your player yeah but it was mer merely cosmetic things what was the front is the top door unlocked yeah is it for darcy yeah okay mm -hmm. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. They did make Double Dragon for 2600. Oh, but, okay. But I have not played it. Yeah. And I know you can choose from the two players. There's player in one, the player arcade. two in the arcade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and maybe you could choose between them when you're playing one player, which color. But mostly it was you get what you get. Mm. <laughs> in in 2600 games so i no i can't think of one off the top of my I'm head just curious i was just yeah. you know in the same way you can pick ah. on the nes between mario and luigi sometimes or yeah. there's there's that option but i i cannot not that i played a ton of 2600 games but i played a few yeah i can't think of one where maybe the audience oh now it's balloon time oh balloons. i made it get him ah Ah, oh, it's over. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> that was quick. Came. See, it you, went yeah. as soon as it came. You need a bubble for that. But it did make that. it to it. Yeah. So is this the... Uh, go down, gravity. Is this the top speed then, I'm guessing? After you get balloon time. We're at 800 now. Down. Oh, gravity's so slow. You have to be so careful not to put yourself up too high. Uh, I is posted saying, I hear the movie Jaws, dum 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 sound, before getting hit by the fish. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that's... no, I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, right into it. I'm at the top difficulty. Yeah. That's okay. actually a, a decent top difficulty oh, yeah. speed. Yeah, no, that's pretty fast. It's not crazy fast like some Atari games. A thousand games. points. I think that's Exactly a thousand. Yeah. World record. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> at least a, a local record. <laughs> a local record an, an even thousand too <laughs> an even thousand i love it yeah that's awesome oh, oh no i started floating no. and i got the balloons which i got the balloon stage so i am totally satisfied and i think we've oh we have to try the different um different options can you list out what the options are because i didn't see what they actually did or maybe it'll show on the screen. Mm. Um, so I will we'll check that out um, after this game. Maybe it's harder. Maybe it's easier. Maybe he does get color changes. <laughs> maybe that's what the options are for. You get to choose 
your color of t-shirt or color of hat. Maybe. No, See, I like... See, gamer, games should have that built in. Why not? Color changes? It's like... Is that easy on the Atari 2600? Easy, 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 easy. Yeah? So but easy. But you don't have to, like, completely re... Whoa! Uh, see, I shouldn't gesticulate while I'm playing games. Okay. One, two, three, four, zero. So we're on zero. Try one. So let's try one. Oh, it's definitely faster. Oh, maybe oh, it's the start the speed? speed? Yeah, the start yeah. speed's definitely up there. It's not super interesting. It just allows you to start at a higher difficulty. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, that's cool. So let's start off at the highest one next time because there's no point in going no, it's, incrementally. It's kind of nice. There's there's something very It's a zen. handicap. It's a handicap for like a really good player versus a not so good player. I suppose. The really good player can start on five. But there's a lovely, there's a lovely uh, oh. a zen quality about starting on the low levels and then it's slowly speeding up as you go. Oh, four. Four. <laughs> There ah, is. Ah, uh, yeah, top speed. <laughs> but it like when um, baseball players put the little ring at the end of their bat, and then when they actually go to play, they take it off. This is the way to practice. You're putting it at the high speed at level four, and then when you want to go for the high scores, put it back down, and then you'll be way better. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, almost. Yeah. Good tactic. You have to. You have to. You have to it play is fast. with. Play with the gravity a little to. Yeah. Oh, oh fishy. Here, I'll go fishy. back to normal. Go back to normal so you can play normal. Oh, no, I don't care. <laughs> it's good either way. Oh, it's gonna consider the colors. Because that is cute to have the different colors. Yeah. You could have the joystick go left and right or something and cycle through the colors with the guy on the screen. Like yeah, yeah. when you make the title screen, when you get to the title screen, um, time to do that. If you do that. Um, it's like Daryl Spice's a Medieval Mayhem and Space Rocks with the opening menu where you choose the options you want mm, for the game. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've played Medieval. Yeah, we I love... we played Medieval Mayhem, right? Oh, or lots. did we play uh, at, the, at our last retro game night that we had with friends? Did we play that one or yes. did we play a different version? No, we played Medieval Mayhem. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Nope. <laughs> um, yeah, that's one awesome thing about a lot of the homebrews now is they have oh. <laughs> right into the water they have that title screen where all the options are on the joystick you get to select and go down oh, left right yeah, yeah. rather than looking up in the manual what's up what is game zero what's game 32 and you have to look at this chart of starts on this level and you get this many lives and yeah it's way way better now um, it is not insta-death. Uh, Lord Munkus asks, is it insta-death when the fish gets you or can you fight him off by mashing the button? If you're just at the level where you're starting to get the fish coming up, you can get yeah, away. Yeah, you can get away. because I you just go crazy on the button. I think at least once I've gotten away from him. Like, he it is came hard. up and I, I, I was on an upfloat. I think you can you can avoid him, but yeah, it's, it's usually it's death. But the problem is 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 with the physics of the game, uh, you're you're you can't control him that fast. No, you know you, you have can't to really you can't, mash you, it. You, you, uh, you <laughs> again gesticulating while you're playing is not is not good. Yeah. Um, uh, you can't climb right away is the problem. So uh, I suppose you could. I don't know if you could turn away, but anyway. You, turning. Oh, does the fish move? Mm, no, I don't think so. He just comes up. Oh, that's a good test to try. Get right down to where the fish is, and stay there, but move left and right. While well, you're just flapping. to see if you can if you can get away. Oh, I'm gonna try that. All right. I bet the fish doesn't move. If he does move, that would look very weird. This fish floating back and forth. <laughs> Uh, I suppose it says my flappy 2600 is crazy fast, but playable. After five speed ups, it never gets faster. I didn't want those horrible physics. I wanted a funny game. I enjoy playing. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah, you don't want, you don't want insane stuff. Uh, anything else? I hear mo uh, movie jaws da -dum, da -dum, yeah. before getting hit I by the fish. Yeah, <laughs> I said that already. <laughs> Come uh, on, get I hear those it too. fifteen. I I hear I uh, get that too. Oh! oh! Yeah, can't quite mash it fast enough. I'm gonna try the fish thing. All right. And then we'll move on. You go at it. Of course, there's a bunch of mm. 
star is here in the way right now, so let's go down. And I'll demonstrate that you can get it. Mm. I don't think you can move that fast. Well, I will now. I've got mega fire on. Can you reset it, please? <laughs> is that mega fire? Yep. Oh, funny. It's cheating. Yes, it is. <laughs> kind of cheaty. So I'll show you, you can get away from the fish. Oh, <laughs> I have to get down. <laughs> With the mega fire? Yeah. Of course, I'm going to die if there's... See, it is hard. It's really hard. Actually, oh, I'll take, I'll turn it off. It's too powerful. Oops. Now I forgot that I only have to press it. I have to press it a bunch of times. I don't think it you can do hard. it. You can. I've done it. I have done it. It's just really, but really But I think you really have hard. to be almost on the upswing. You do. You know, because, yeah. because of the physics of it, so. There. Ooh, See? nice, nice. Now I'm going to try and move. No, he stays in one place. But you're already, he won't stay up because... Yeah, he doesn't move, so there you go. But he, he goes back down if you go too high. <laughs> and if I think if you stay in the spot where that triggers him, he will kill you. So if you don't fly away immediately, he will get you. So there's no point. Like, mm -hmm. moving away won't show anything because he'll just go back down. He either goes back down or kills you. Yeah. Um, it would be cool, uh, Lord Monka says, it would be cool if he would grab you and then you fight him a bit to try and get him off and start with it easier to fight the fish off, but it's harder as you get further in. Yeah. That's how it works in Joust. Oh, yeah? And it's actually a good mechanic. It's harder to fight off the hand? Like, the hand grabs you and slowly pulls you down, but you can flap to get away from him oh. if you go crazy on the button. Hmm. I wouldn't mind that in this game. It'd be cool if, if the fish came and you pull the fish out of the water and then he <laughs> fell back down. But yeah, but yeah. that might be asking too much. <laughs> it might it might be asking too <laughs> that much. That would be cool. Yeah. So if you're I'd, like ah, but this shaking is shaking off the fi fish is, as you flow back up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is good too. I know like, I like it. Like it's just yeah. don't get too yeah. close. Do you want me to you switching the uh... switching the game? Okay. So it's time for the second game. And the second game is up. There we go. Oh, and it's a loud game, so let's turn that down a bit. Holy crap. Here nice. we go. Oh, all right. All what am I doing? How, am I, how do I play this game? You just start. Press a button. And I shall so start reading about it, and you try and figure it out. Which is the fun of the games. Okay, Up by Jason Santucci, a.k.a. The Loon, a.k.a. Geminitronic. He's got two, two fake names. Uh, this was released in 2015. Um, so the, the notes... From Brian Mathern's Hobrew database says, it evolved from acid to your face is goo, <laughs> which is quite a quite a funny name. Um, it was limited to 20 numbered copies and sold through Etsy for $29.95. Um, so this is a very, very rare game, and and that's why I'm playing it on a ROM, because it's no chance. Something that was released um, three years ago that I don't have, so we do have to play it on a ROM. So, and there was also a sequel uh, made to this game called Up Plus, which was also limited to 20 copies, um, but no ROM of that has ever been released. So we can never play Up Plus unless one of those 20 people knows how to rip um, the ROM from it or um, Jason Santucci uh, Gemini Tronic decides to release it, and why? Why not? Unless he doesn't want people making um, copies of it. 
I guess, and releasing their own copies on cartridge because some people do that and don't put reproduction on it, which is not good. Have you figured out how to play? No, no clue. <laughs> okay, escape the space barrier. Press a button, it's very noisy. Thank you. <laughs> escape the space barrier by thrusting upwards. Avoid the plasma ball and laser blasts from the enemy UFOs. Obtain the energy pods, the round objects with the exclamation mark, to blast oh. openings. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That looked like a gigantic... Um, Footprint? Uh, no, bacterium. Oh! I, I, that was my thought when I saw it. I'm like... It would be a good bacteria. Yeah. What's back difference between bacteria and bacterium? Is one and multiple? Bacteria is multiple. You almost always talk about in multiples. Yes. But I'm still not really sure... Oh, it just, it creates holes. Little holes in the barriers. Ah. Um, if a plasma ball strikes an energy pod, then the space wall rebuilds. So you don't want the ball ah. hitting the exclamation mark. Points are awarded when the plasma ball hits the space wall or the player exits far north. Mm. Set the difficulty switch to pro for a slightly more challenging game. Press fire to start the game or thrust upwards. Steer left and right with the joystick. Um, and this is from his website. It says, The Loon asserts oh. that retro development represents a distinct art form, retaining the creativity, enduring gameplay, and individual empowerment of computing's past. As such, he focuses on using tools accessible to novice programmers, low-resolution text and graphics, and personally scored music. So that sounds like he did every aspect of this game. And it's kind of a backwards game to what you're it's normally used to. It's a very strange to. game. <laughs> it is very strange, but somewhat interesting at the same time. It's, it's like Breakout, but you're the enemy. Like, you're the bad guy in Breakout in this game. Well, you're trying to break out, though. Yeah, well, you're still trying to break out. But usually, normally in Breakout, you're the you're the platform at the oh, bottom. Oh yes, but you're not playing the path. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. see what you mean. In I this was, game, um, you're the other I, guy. What's that other very famous game? Oh, there's a thousand uh, Breakout games uh, where you're shooting and it's flashy. It's like a big. Oh, what's it? What are some of the elements in it? Uh, there's like a bullet and it's always shooting towards you. Okay. Oh, God. Yars Revenge? Yes. <laughs> okay. It kind of reminds me <laughs> oh, of the aesthetics of Yars Revenge. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a wall. It, no, but the aesthetics oh. of it and the colors and, and the kind of uh, things shooting at you while you're trying to break through. True. It has a very Yars oh, Revenge Oh, that is true. Kind of Except feel. you can't eat the wall in this one. No. And you don't have He's eating to... the wall in a way, and then you're you're getting these um because that little um that little thing is breaking through the wall. It is, yes. Yeah, so He's it's... kind of his own worst enemy. <laughs> Cuz he's breaking down the wall and is helping you, but at the same time he's hurting you. You're almost there. Yay! It never ends. I was always wondering about this jitter. I had always played it on an emulator on Stella, and I was thinking, "Oh, it'll look better on, it'll look better on the actual hardware." But it's no, it's it still looks insane, <laughs> like jittery, crazy, insane graphics. But the game itself is kind of I like crazy. It. It, like like I said, it reminds me weird of weird and janky and just. It, it reminds me of Yara's Revenge a little bit. There's that aesthetic kind of a. It is. Slightly chaotic feel to it, and multiple, multiple, weird multiple things going colors, on. and yeah, and sh like gradations of color too. Oop. Yeah, and there's like a guy firing at you yeah. always. There's no static or static noise, but no. I like that though about Yaris Bench. Up, uh, I supposed to. Uh, uh, says up by Geminatronics. He goes by now, so yeah, his website is still named as his old name um which was i've forgotten already the loon so it's the loon dot itch dot io and it's got a bunch of his games on there listed and this is this is one of them listed on 
on there with a download. Um, so if you want to download this game, that's where that one is. And the last game, um, Balloon Trip, was is posted on the Atari Age forums, where most most of them are posted. Most games in development. This one is this one's finished. It was actually released on cartridge. And published, uh, his website says published October seventh, two thousand fifteen. So you get three three lives. Um, Arena Foot says up plus has better graphics. Mm. Is that the That's the, the second the sequel iteration? The sequel. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you can kind of trap yourself too. Get get through it. Get it. Get. Oh, was, oh, there you go. And it's not like clear cut. Like getting through no. things isn't like super easy to do. It, it's you. You're whittling away at it, and so <laughs> yes. is the bad guy. Yeah, your enemy kind helper. Of? Just don't get in his way. He's helping you escape, but don't get in his way. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, das Richter seventy one says Arkanoid. Yep, that's another. Um, one of the many, many Breakout uh, clones. I think Breakout was oh. the first one. Is that the name of the original, original? Breakout? Br um, brick Breaking Break, yeah. um, Game. I'm going to look it up. I have to look it up. I'm pretty sure it's Breakout. Or is it Arkanoid? No, Arkanoid's way after. Arkanoid has like lasers and things that double the width of your... Like it has oh, so yeah, many. yeah, the pills. Yeah, it's advanced Breakout, super advanced Breakout. I'm sure it was Breakout. I'm pretty sure it's Atari that made it. The arcade game I'm talking about. Oh, there's oh. like festivals called Breakout. All right. My turn. My Here you can turn. look up Breakout Arcade. Oh, crazy noise. May 13th by Atari 1976. 76. Yeah, that's probably Bristol the original. Bristol and Bristow, influenced by the 1972 Atari arcade game Pong. Well, yeah. I mean... But Pong doesn't break... Influ influenced, yeah. influenced. Pong doesn't break down walls, right? So. Ugh. I keep thinking pressing forward is going to make me go up, but it's just left and right on the button. Let me through! So, 1976. That's an early game. Hi, Tari. Coming in. The lasers are the unpredictable things. Like the ball you mm. can account for, but the laser, I guess it does get shot from where the pad is always. So as long as you stay out of the pad in between. It was built out of the motivation of trying to create a Pong game for a single player. Oh. That's where it came from. So it added a couple features to Pong so yeah. that it would be interesting yeah. playing it. Because they did have um, handball. <laughs> where oh you just play against the you wall you hit it against the yeah. wall and you got a point for each mm. wall hit and as long as it didn't go past you you were fine so it was pretty much the handball variation but added some bricks to it Ugh. it's hard to avoid come on come on come on come on go yes level three this only counts points so you doesn't really keep track of what level you're on. So, uh, Steve was Wozniak. Wozniak, yeah. Originally developed Breakout. Developed something... Oh, yes. I remember that story. Uh, he did it in, like, a couple days. So, with I, just I don't it up. quite get the explanation. Okay. Uh, what is it? Let me it? find the... Sorry, I just skimmed it. Ugh. Oh, is that a path already? Oh, I missed it. So it was related to the number of chips. Would that be yes. in the cartridge? Well, what? it wouldn't be. A, it, it's the arcade game they're talking about. Okay, okay. That It'd makes be sense. on the board. So it was developed by Atari Games, not for the Atari 2600 then. I see oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, was, that makes sense. It was sense. in the arcade. So they wanted to make a board with fewer chips. Oh, damn it. And yep. so Wozniak created it um, using 42 chips and then eventually 44. Yep. 
Um, because it was too complicated. He made it too complicated to replicate. Well, most with most 42. most Atari games required 150 to 170 chips. So they didn't want to make 100. So um, in particular, they were trying to reduce the number of chips associated, I guess, to the board on the game. Yeah. He did in 44, but then Atari, for for whatever reason, doesn't define it. Said that they weren't allowed. They weren't. They were unable to use Wozniak's design. It's too complicated. He said by designing it with as few chips as possible, he made the design difficult to manufacture. <laughs> yes. So then they. It's too good. And then Wozniak claims Atari just couldn't understand it. Couldn't uh, understand the design. Yeah. So, uh, but then Atari ended up designing their own version, which contained 100 chips. <laughs> And, and Wozniak basically afterwards said, oh, the gameplay's the same. Like, it's the oh, same okay. as what he developed. But, but so they didn't use his design, but... Based yeah. it off of yeah. what he came anyway, up with. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Piece of history. So, uh, yeah, a Pong game for a single player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, translates well. And this is yet another iteration of that. Yeah. Yeah. But backwards. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, it's very neat. So the image they have here yeah. of Breakout. You can show it to the camera. Well, I see similarities. They're almost, it almost seems to be, again, the aesthetic of the original Breakout uh, has a lot of similarities to the yeah. design of um, Up, so. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, but it's a good twist. Good twist on things. Yeah. Gets fairly easy after a while. Fairly uh, repetitive. It's repetitive, and you're waiting for openings to. Yeah, not much to do. Because you're while not you're controlling waiting. the um, the paddle at the bottom. No. You're kind of waiting for them to make some breaks, and then catching the uh, the bacterium. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well call it that. The yeah. Exclamation mark bacterium. It's like I can't, I can't do anything yet. And you can't affect change that much in the game. No, That's no, kind of, it's you're kind of, kind of waiting. You're waiting. You're you're dodging the yeah. the bullets and you're waiting. But uh, it is it is interesting. Come on, come on, get out of my way. Got, oh, uh, lots of bonus lives. I'm back up to. I was mm -hmm. back up to three lives again. How many points do you get for oh dying? Um, for the bacteria. Two. Two. Or did I even get no, some? No. Zero. One? Maybe that's when it's getting the when you get zero. Oh, now I'm just getting sloppy. Well that's what happens. Good, I think we played this one out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not much to it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I like I like the look of it. The gameplay's a little bit dull because you're just sort of waiting. You're kind it's of unique, waiting. But it is kinda unique. dull. Yeah. Yeah. But mm, interesting, though. So there you go. Yes. Where's my tablet? Oh, thank you. So next one is Ball Blazer. And this one has a bit of an interesting history. Um, so this is Ball Blazer, a work in progress um, by Roland Pater, Roland uh, P. on Atari Age. Um, this version is from uh, October 25th, 2015. Um, and this was originally, actually, we're not going to do that yet. Um, what we're going to do is compare it because this is a port mm -hmm. of an eight, either it was, it was released on a bunch of home computers, like the Atari 8-bit line. It was released on Commodore 64. It was also released on the Atari 7800. Mm -hmm. But never on the 2600 because it's it's fairly advanced. Um, as you will see, it is a 3D game, um, which is pretty hard to do. Most 3D games on the 2600. Uh, so let's take a look first at Ball Blazer. And actually, I'm going to turn up the sound for this one. So we're going to... So how's that going to work? How's that going to work? Okay, I'm just going to be quiet. Sorry. Because it loops back if we have two things on. So I'm just going to mute us while we listen to the 
the music. Okay. Because we're going to listen to the music and look at how it looks like. This is the Atari 8-bit version. Okay. Like the Atari home computers. Okay, so you're looking at that going, uh, how are they going to make that on the 2600? <laughs> this first person perspective 3D game? Yeah. Crazy. Um, and the music is actually really interesting. Um, let me read a little bit about that. Ball, Blazer, Ball Blazer's theme music called Song of the Grid, heard between matches, was algorithmically generated. A technique designed by Lucasfilm Games team leader Peter Langston, um, who, who made the game, uh, or programmed some parts of, it, of the game, and called it Riffology. Uh, the lead melody is assembled from a predefined set of 32 eight, probably eighth note, melody fragments or riffs, which are put together randomly by an algorithm that also makes choices on several parameters, including how to fast to play the riff, allowed to play it when to omit an elite delete notes who wrote this when to insert a rhythmic break the melody is accompanied by bassline drums and chords which are also assembled on the fly by a simplified version of the above approach in effect the music plays forever without repeating itself but without straying too far from the original mm. theme langston an, an experienced jazz rock and folk musician said of ball blazers music one reviewer an eminent jazz player pat Metheny said it sounded like John Coltrane did it. I think that's my best compliment so far. Mm. Um, so now we're going to listen to some music that was... Oh, that's not very interesting to look at. That's the sun. Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to listen to some music made in Batari Basic um, by... Oh, God, I didn't note it down. It was but made by, I know, somebody's going to give me heck. I, I post is going to give me heck in a second because I don't have the name. Oh, uh, Random Terrain. Where is it? Now I'm re remembering that. I know I have it written down here. But uh, this music was done by Random Terrain. Oh, there it is. Um, there's a lot of discussion about music to include in the game, and pretty much the final music was made uh, after many iterations was posted by Random Terrain. This is independent of the game that we're going to play. Mm. There's no music in the game because he hasn't merged them yet. Uh, by Random Terrain, Dwayne Allen Han, who runs the Batari Basic how-to website, mm. randomterrain.com. He says, Random Terrain posted... Uh, I hunted and hunted with... Hunted and hunted with Toy... Tone Toy 2008, but couldn't find any better notes. I did edit the music data so it would sound a little better to my ears. Still sounds off to me, but I guess that's the best can be done without spending weeks or months messing with it. To make it easier for me, I edited the BB code to match the volume, audio, audio control, and frequency that the Tone Toy 2008 has so that the data is VCF instead of VFC. But anyway. Instead of FVC. FVC. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. So here is that um, music. Oh, and you guys can't hear it, so, because we need to be on the Atari. Let's do that again. Yeah, there's nothing to see because <laughs> it's just music but 
This is what Random Terrain did. Um, this is the Ice Bosta says, this is the 2600 TIA noise chip. So this is using only the built-in hardware, hardware yeah. not not the acceleration crazy stuff that Ice Bosta does with Mappy nice. <laughs> or or with like the the samples in Draconian. This is just like the basic hardware done in Batari Basic as well. Okay. So very, very well done. There we go. So now we're going to actually play the game, mm -hmm. and it is a two player game. So I'm going to plug in the second joystick. Okay. Atari is going to be the second player. Is he? Oh, are you good at playing Ball Blazer? Hmm? Uh, let's get out. Genesis controller. And a nice handy dandy shoe holder, a see through shoe holder on my back of my door <laughs> with all the different controllers in it now. So I don't have to be hunting in bins like before. So much better. So this is from 2015. Okay. Unfortunately, no. has not been updated since then. Oh, oh, just oh. a little twisted. There. Okay. Can you move? Yep. Yeah, I can move. Look at this. Oh wow. Two-player independent wow. split screens. 3D movement. So I'm not sure what what am I doing? Goal! <laughs> oh, it's is it like a, a it's a soccer, soccer game pitch? essentially. So uh -huh. um, see that glowing ball? That's the soccer ball okay. or the ball. So go towards it. You automatically pick it up. Now it's yours. Now you keep going straight. You're always facing in one direction. Am I supposed to hit the pole? Not me. That's I... me. Oh, that's you. Avoid me. Go there. Oh god. Now press the button to oh. to score the goal. Um, or, want... or you lose the ball. Or you lose the ball by I don't know. Which is me. You're always on the bottom. That's funny. And you would have to back up because you missed me, right? I think I threw it at you. <laughs> so too. <laughs> Can I get it from you? Uh, maybe by pressing the button. Um, we'll read the instructions in a second. I'm trying to get... Where... Oh, I lost the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so were you just bumping into yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... That's, that was, Where is the ball? I don't know. Oh, it's like we have to go find it. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, oh. See, I got confused. I was looking at your game. Oh, I dropped it. So I am on the top. Yes, I know. And Tanya's on. Um, <laughs> telling them. And Tanya's on the bottom screen. Ah, uh, oh, get out of my way. <laughs> oh, you stole it. Or kicked it no, away. No, I kicked it away. Oh, where oh. is it? You have it. I don't know where I'm going though. Where am I? Oh, oh, oh. I'm going the wrong way, I think. Always forward. I am forward. Oh, you scored. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that is fun. Nope. No. Nope. I got it. Oh, no. Nope. I'm going to oh. shoot it down there. No. Nope. Oh, you can shoot it and pass it to yourself. Got it. <gasps> so you can kick it down. <sighs> Yes, this is a game that is that hilarious. Needs to be completed. Like it's so good. Once you add in like the oh. sound. Oh my God, where to go? Oh. There we go. Oh, oh he's on oh. a runaway oh. and scores. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I no. got it. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. Where's the goal? Where's the goal? Oh no, no, no. it's gone. Oh, it's off the. Oh, I lost it. Oh, now it's back to center pitch. No, no, you're somehow closer to it. That doesn't seem. I fair. don't think so. Oh. And oh. goal! <laughs> you have to just head for it immediately. I know, but I do. <laughs> but somehow you get to it faster. Do you hit the button to pick it up? No, no, you just touch it, and it picks it up automatically. Oh, start it over. So I'll let you practice, <laughs> and I will read the instructions. Oh, also impressive, it's only 4K. So you're looking at this play field. If you know anything about 
programming the 2600. Um, you're looking at the, the green area, and that is done by background graphics alone. Just background. Not play field, not player colors, not balls, not missiles, just background. And if you look at the code, it's unbelievable. Every line has its has it its own kernel because every line has to be drawn in a separately different way because of the offset from where you draw on the left over to the right to make sure that everything lines up. It's unbelievable. And it's so smooth and fast. Uh, okay. So, escape the space barrier. Oh, that's the last game. <laughs> escape the space barrier. Yeah. No, that doesn't sound like the right script. Uh, no. Uh, Ball Blazer is a simple one-on-one -on -one sports style game bearing similarities to basketball and soccer. Most, mostly soccer. Each side is represented by a craft called a rotofoil, which nice. can be controlled by either a human player or a computer-controlled droid with 10 levels of difficulty. This is only two-player because it's, it's a work in progress. It's much easier to let two people control a game like this than Some programming AI. AI. Although there's, it wouldn't be as hard as other games for AI because there's no barriers. Yeah. You just go after the ball, get the ball, head towards the goal, shoot. Um... The basic objective of the game is to score points by either firing or carrying a floating ball into the opponent's goal. So you can carry it into the goal, too. I don't know about this version. This I'm reading the instructions from um, either the 7800 or just any of the old releases. Imagine mailing in your Ball Blazer 7800 cart into Atari Age to get your Ball Blazer 2600 cart. Nice. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is amazing what people can do today with 2600 hardware. is unbelievable. And 4K, like I supposed to says. Um, it's reasonably really crazy that they could pull the split screen views on the 2600, Ground Trooper says. It, it is. It's more about the calculations that need to be done for the two separate screens. Rather than, like, the drawing isn't the hard part. It's the setting up of the drawing. The 2600 is amazing at drawing. But you have to do it in real time. That's the hard part. Um, the 2600 is seven objects, I suppose to says. Background is one of the seven. Notice all the jaggies are three pixels wide, not four pixels. Like the playfield object, 40 by uh, 179 to 210. Yeah, so you get better resolution out of the background, which is normally just a solid color. Hardly anybody changes the background from line to line. It's always like a color, color, color. Um, because you really don't have a lot of time to change the change the colors while you're doing other things like drawing sprites and drawing balls and everything. Uh, a player can gain co possession of the ball by simply running into it, at which point it is held in a force field in front of the craft. The opponent can attempt to knock the ball away from the player using the fire button. Oh. And the player in possession of the ball can also fire the ball towards the goal. When a player does not have the possession of the ball, his or her rotofoil automatically turns 90 degrees intervals to face the ball. While possession of the ball turns the player towards the opponent's goal. So if you don't have the ball, it will turn towards the ball. Ah. But once you have the ball, then you will face the opposite person's goal automatically. So you just head straight forward as soon as you, you have the ball. just run straight. I was trying to knock it out of your hands. I'd thrown mm. it into your hands. Ah. And I do was you, trying to knock it out. And do it's, you need the button to do it? Well, so I'm not sure oh. if it's... You have to do it from the side. Do you see what I mean? Right. It's not an easy thing to knock out. But there, now it got kicked out. So obviously, I did something. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing the ball through the goal scores one point. Firing the ball through the post from a close range scores two points. Successfully scoring from a long range where the goalposts are not visible scores three points. So you could go just when they're visible, back up a bit, and score if you could. The maximum number of total points between the two players is 10, meaning that any points scored would take the combined total above 10, which would cause the opponent's score to be reduced by the same amount, resulting in a tug-of-war scoring system. Oh, so you have to beat them by a certain amount 
Oh, you always have to beat them by... You have to get 10. Oh, that's weird. Uh, if time runs out and the score is tied, the game goes into sudden death where the first player to score wins. I don't think all of that has been implemented in this. I think he was just trying to get this working. Um, it, so a video of this was posted on YouTube and the original programmer got wind of it and saw this version posted mm. on YouTube. Oh, cool. And the comments... The comment he said, uh, which was Peter Langston, said about this game uh, two years ago. Uh, nice going. Of course, it won't really be Ball Blazer until, one, the jaggies are smoothed out. And he's talking about just those three pixel-wide edges going yeah. down. Uh, I.S. Posta also mentions the jaggies there. Yes, <laughs> the jaggies. The horrible jaggies. Um, and, B, the droid AI can run the players. So he wants AI, mm. not just one person game. What are you doing? That's more important than this. Sorry. Oh my God. And three, the killer machine composed music and game related sound effects are included. So the music's already done by random terrain. So that's totally done. Mm. And the AI, you could probably get away with it. Not too, it's, it doesn't seem as hard as other games to do AI. Not that I'm a programmer of any sort <laughs> <laughs> at this level, um, but it seems a lot easier than other games because it's it's just a square open field. Mm -hmm. You're just going after the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but still, it's great that you've gotten this far, and we're flattered that you're interested enough to put the work in. Congratulations. So it's kind of the blessing of the original programmer who worked for Lucasfilm. Nice. Or LucasArts. Yeah. That's amazing. Roland P's response to that in January 2017, he says, I think it's safe to say that smoothing out the Jaggies is not possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. this is a 2600. Jaggies are not going away. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, um, dro he says, Droid AI is very important. That's high on the priority list. If I have that, Ball Blazer is a playable game for a single player. Yeah. Then music and sounds, I might do that first because so far Ball, Ball Blazer hasn't produced any sounds. Number four in this excellent list. Um, so he says, so out of my head, one, sounds, two, droid AI, three, countdown timer. So he doesn't have that. Ramping difficulty like goalposts that are getting narrower when time passes. Mm -hmm. That's good. An intro demo. Yep, for the music. And, mm -hmm. and um, make it nice. There we go. I think I covered everything. Yep. Okay. Let's have some games. You ready? Oh, zero, zero. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, cheater. <laughs> cheater. Cheater, 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 cheater. Um, oh, did I get it? Oh, oh I kicked, you it, kicked away. it away. Nice. So I would say smashing on the buttons is a good... Hi, Atari. Oh, 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 oh. No. oh, I got it. Oh, I kicked I, it away. Yeah. Oh, but I got it back. No, I didn't. I kicked it out of bounds. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. It may be, if we are pressing both the exact same time, it may give me priority because I'm player one. Maybe. And then he may not have randomized that when, it, when two people meet exactly yeah. at the same time, which makes sense. See, you always... Oh, see, I kick it away from myself. You did kick myself. it away. And then I Because I thought up. you had it. I thought I had it too. But somehow you kicked it away. Oh! Oh! Hey! <laughs> what the hell? It's a very different kind of perspective because <sighs> as soon as you lose view of it, it's like, where to go? And you have to go hunting for it almost. Get, give it! Give it! Give it! Hey! 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 No, no! ha <laughs> ha! Oh, yeah, I being able to play this two players is amazing. And there's definitely not enough two player games out there. Oh, you kicked it away. And definitely not enough yeah. two player co-op games. Now, those are rare. Usually it's head to head like combat or this or. Ah, oh, yeah. I thought I, nope. that was your, those were my goal posts. Nope. Oh my god. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Got it back. 
I think sound, <laughs> sound, sound would I add a lot to this because Maybe. then you would know if you have it in possession or they do. Like yeah. you'd be able to tell a bit better because right now it's a little, a little hard to go, oh, I have it or you kicked it or, you know, it Yay! got, it got bounced away. Yay! Winner! Oh, you did win. Yeah. Winner! Atari! Winner! Woo! He's like, what? Treats? <laughs> Awesome. Oh, oh and he's so, shedding. Oh, oh so oh, much shedding. So fluffy. It is summer. Yeah, it is. So, wow. That was fun. That's cool. That's a, that's uh, a cool game. Amazing game. Yeah, that's he, cool. The um, program is still active Yeah. in, in the forums. Mm. So maybe this will give him some incentive. Please, please, please finish this game. Yes. Oh, my God. And, it's and beautiful. Lord Monkus, I agree. Two-player games co-op is awesome. Yeah, there just aren't enough. Yeah, there aren't just aren't enough games. You know out there. any that are co-op? I don't know about for the twenty six hundred. I don't know about the twenty six hundred. But there's lots of head to heads, but co-ops. But co-op games are are. There's one maybe. Not a lot of them. Is one maybe coming? No. One. No, yeah. No. Was it? I can't remember. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. So please finish that. The music's done. Like the game is ninety nine percent. Yeah. Um, except for AI. That, Completely that's, playable, though. But I mean... As a co-op, as a two-player Totally. Game. You add yeah. some sound effects in. Oh, yeah. And put the music as a demo screen. Mm -hmm. You've you've almost got... Is there kernel time to add three-channel Pitfall 2 mappy music? <laughs> Maybe. You might have to um, deconstruct it. Oh, no, my... Disassemble it. Disassemble it. Disassemble. I got there. You might have to disassemble it and look at the uh, look at the code to see if there's any time for that. But that that would be a magical thing to be able to add in the original music into the game as it was. Wow, that would be amazing. Okay, now it is time for game number three, four, four. the final game. Okay. Um, which is Crazy Balloon, which is actually on cartridge. Nice. Um, While you said that, I'm, I'm going to run out and come back. I'll quickly. be back momentarily. Okay. So this one I got recently. Oh my god, this one's giving trouble too. Oh, there we go. That one was giving trouble like the other one. What's going on with these cartridges? Hmm. Oh, that's loud. Let's just turn that down a bit. So, crazy balloon. There we go. There's the manual. By Manuel Rock... Rockstar? Rotscar? Rotscar? Rotscar, maybe. Hopefully. That's a tough one. Too many consonants in a row. Rot... How would you pronounce that? Rotskar? Uh, Rosh, Roshkar? Roshkar? Rockstar. Ho Rockstar. <laughs> I'm going to call you Manuel uh, Rockstar. Because uh, that's cool. <laughs> Roshkar, probably. Yeah. I'm going to guess. I, 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 yeah, mangled. Roshkar. Roshkar. So this was released in 2004 by Manuel, 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 Manuel? Manuel? Manuel. Yeah, Manuel. Uh, AKA Cyber Goth. Uh -huh. um, and this actually was an arcade game. Uh, Crazy Balloon is an arcade game released by Taito in 1980. Mm. Crazy Balloon requires the player to maneuver a balloon through a maze full of thorns in order to reach the goal. The game has appeared in various platforms, including an updated remake for the PlayStation Portable as part of the Taito Legends Power Up Collection. Mm. And so let's look at the arcade version of it first. Uh, wouldn't UT2-2600 count as two-player co-op in certain situations? Mm. If, selections. Selections. I don't know. I don't, we didn't play any of the selections. Uh, yes, there is one pixel death in this in this game. In, in this, this, in Crazy Balloon? Yes. Yeah. Your balloon touches a side, you are dead. Mm. Dead, dead, dead. So let's get this up and going. Oh, this is the arcade? 
Yes, this is the arcade version right here. Crazy balloon. Um, insert coin. <laughs> Let's fast forward to some uh, gameplay here. There you go. Very, you could tell this is an early, early, early game, right? Oh my goodness. Rough graphics. Wow. Um, Crazy Balloon is a port of the 1980s underdog arcade game, which is the grandfather of games like Kuru Kuru Kuren. Um, I think that's the rotating, like rotating stick game. Okay. I That's on my list of games I want to buy. Mm -hmm. I haven't bought that yet, but Kuru Kuru Kuren. Um, yeah, let's see. There are no of official home ports of the game at the time of release, of course, in 1980. What systems were out? Very, not very powerful ones, mm. but you could probably do it. But uh, there are some clones, including Crazy Balloon for the Commodore 64 uh, in 1983. Crazy Balloons for the ZX Spectrum. ZX Spectrum. <laughs> I, f I always find it funny when Americans are talking about the... ZX? They say ZX Spectrum. It's a British computer system, and yeah. it's it's Z. We're Canadians. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just find it funny when they say Z ZX Spectrum. Yeah. Um, and a version of the BBC Micro was also developed by Acorn Soft, but never released. And a homebrew clone... For the Atari 2600 was released in 2004. Um, and I was reading this and going, clone, 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 clone. It said clone all over the place. Now, usually hear port, a port of the game. Mm. So maybe the distinction between a clone and a port is that it's authorized or unauthorized. Because usually when they talk about when it was licensed back in the day, it's a port of the game from the arcade and a clone is like oh it's not the real version it's just a clone of it but they were all titled crazy balloon or crazy balloons so i'll have to look that up i don't know Between but a distinction. port I, I i it also might be in the translation like like a, good of a, a clone might be as close as possible whereas a port might have a little bit more wiggle room for the idiosyncrasies of the system I don't know. Yeah, clone implies perfect. It, or as close or very as possible. Perfect. As close as possible versus right. porting it, you can Scale play with it, it a little bit. Like, it, it might have some different... I don't know. Yeah. Clone versus port. What do people yeah. think in the, yeah, in the what chat? Is, clone versus port. Is there a difference? Or do they essentially mean the same thing? I don't know. Oh, this looks challenging. It's... It's challenging. I've seen so it this played. this is the arcade. That's the arcade, but we're going to play. Yeah. We're going to play. I feel a lot of death coming The, <laughs> the 2600 yeah. version here. Yeah. Crazy Balloon. I used to... I used to... I supposed to says, I used to say I saw nearly every arcade video game. But recently, games like this and even Bosconian weren't in my area, and I'm still learning. I had never seen this game. I had seen Bosconian. That's the Draco. Um, never. This this one, I don't think was super popular. It looks ter terribly difficult. Terribly difficult. You're first. No. I have actually never played this game. Oh, did I accidentally press the button? No, I did. Is there sound? Music? Oh, I turned it right down. You guys can hear it. We couldn't. There you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arena Foot. Uh, Lord Munkus says a port is a licensed copy with the same characters, names, and mechanics. Clones change just <gasps> enough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <That was loud. laughs> Just like the popping of a real balloon. <laughs> yeah, it is startling. Her. I didn't even think I was that close. One pixel. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Now my heart is like racing. <laughs> racing. Waiting for that to happen again. Have you seen any of... Um, oh jeez. <laughs> any yeah. of the speedrunning games where they have a, a strap on their wrist measuring their heart rate? Oh no. And they have the heart rate... 
monitor numbers on the screen. I hadn't even touched it. Did I? Oh, I ran out of time. Oh. Oh, that explains. I'm like, why? I th I didn't even think I was close. Whoa. And and when they like get a world record, their heart rate spikes like insane oh. amounts. Oh. Well, yeah, it would if you get a world record. I need to try it again. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I finally get what that that timing. <laughs> I'm like, why did I just die? So introduction, Crazy Balloon is a game of strategy and skill. The object and is to maneuver a dedicated bobbing balloon to safety through mazes filled with dangerous obstacles. Uh, using controller, Crazy Balloon uses the left joystick controller. Make sure it's firmly plugged into the controller jack at the back of you. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, configuration switch, the left difficulty switch toggles between beginner mode. Yeah, we're in beginner. <laughs> Oh my God, that sound! Brash, brash oh, music. You do get a, you do get a, a bit of a. Oh no, that's where I'm sitting, kitten, kitten, kitten. Move over just a little bit. There we go. Um, Friday night fun time. I wish my wife would sip wine and play Atari. With me. <laughs> I'm, I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> No. Sipping wine and playing the 2600. Nothing wrong with sipping wine and playing 2600. That's right. Oh. Oh. Um, I suppose this is exactly I, but I want to, I want to infringe, and make like Satan's Hollow 2600. Oh my God. Good luck with that one. But not impossible with the right kernels and. Actually, that's not too bad. They do go in circles, so maybe they're. Like four in a line, they'd be pretty flashy, but you'd be able to use both players for that. So it would only, no, that wouldn't be too bad, Satan's Hollow. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Um, Sinistar. I have not seen Sinistar for the 2600. Um, I don't know much about Sinistar. I've not played it all, at all, actually. I've only seen brief videos of it, but I'll have to take a look at that. Oh. What are you doing? You do get one hit. Oh, you do? You get one hit. Oh, oh that's probably in position B. That's great. I haven't got there yet. Yeah, no, that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing. In yeah. the arcade mode, each collision will immediately burst the balloon. Yeah. Well, in the beginner, it can survive a minor scratch. Yeah, it'll get it'll get one tap, and then, and then you'll die in the second. Sorry, super loud. The right difficulty switch toggles the tick-tock sound effects on the balloon. No, that's good. You want the tick-tock. Mm. Both switch settings are constantly checked, so they have immediate effect. Interesting. <laughs> so you can turn it off and on the sound. That's mm. cool. That's a good option. A lot of them don't change until you uh, restart. So you can start from starting the game. Let's see... How I do here. Starting the game. Oh, I collided but didn't die yet. On the title screen, you can start a new game anytime oh. by pressing the fire button or select. You can start at higher levels by pressing select multiple times. Okay. So you can cycle through the levels, which is nice because it gives you the option to actually practice a level. If yes. there's one you're having a lot of trouble, or you don't have to start and, and cycle all the way through them. So yeah, I, I, I do like games that do that because especially when there's more of a puzzle element to it. Yeah, um, so you don't have to start nice from the beginning. To, yeah, and this yeah. is more of a puzzle game, kind of. Uh, yeah, no, it strategy is strategy puzzle. It, there's there's some strategy. Obviously, there's timing, but um, there's a little bit of both in there. Ooh, Ooh, see, see, you get one it. scratch. Uh, gameplay: Use your joystick to steer your balloon. It will move in whichever direction the joystick is pushed. Your goal is to reach the exit of each maze within a given time limit without yep. touching anything that will damage or burst your balloon. Yep. During your journey, you will encounter several types of hazards, such as moving spikes or Hurricane Man. I haven't seen him yet. Hurricane Man? Who will try uh -oh. to blow you against a spiked wall. At the beginning of each round, the score display switches to the current level number. Okay. What? At the beginning of each round, the score display switches to the current oh, the level top. number. Okay, sorry. Top, yeah. That went right over my head. Uh, could be the wine. Ah. <laughs> um, the timer bar will slowly decrease as you play, indicating how much time you have left to ah. reach the exit. 
At the bottom right of the screen, your remaining stock of balloons is displayed. Yeah. Note, no matter how many extra balloons you earn, the maximum shown on screen can only ever be three. So you can earn extra above the three. That, oh, to me, okay. that's what that implies. Ending the game, your game ends when all three of your balloons have been burst. You can also end your game manually at any time by pressing reset. Oh. Scoring, each time you reach the goal oh. of a level... <laughs> I almost made it. So each time you reach... Ah. Are you okay? Did you put it on hard? Oh, you're going nope. up. I see. I made it to level yeah. three. I'm continuing with level three. Yeah. It's a puzzle game. <laughs> so scoring. Each time you reach the goal of a level, you're awarded with a score depending on your remaining time. The faster you are, the higher your score. Additionally, you get a thousand bo point bonus for safely bringing home an intact balloon. So if you're playing in the beginner uh, mode and often take uh, damage, your scoring will be significantly lower. So if oh, you do it without okay. hitting it once, then... I do, I do like the colors. Um, yeah, I had trouble at 3, too. Yeah. It's tight. It is very tight. Um, for each 10,000 points you score, an extra balloon is awarded. 10,000? Yes. Okay. So special features to prevent a sudden death early in a level, there's a time safe zone installed. So if you're holding the joystick in the wrong direction by accident, your balloon doesn't burst, but gets beginning? a second chance from the starting spot again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wow. I have never seen this in an Atari game. Um, a moving screen where this whole screen Is that moves. intentional? Oh, yeah. You don't think that's a bug? Oh, God, no. It's moving at a The whole constant... screen is moving, though. Yeah. It's awesome. And you, you have to keep moving your balloon. You have to... Are you sure that's intentional? <laughs> of course it is. It's, I'm not saying it's this not challenging. This is the same maze Oh, it's the, the same one. maze. You're right. It yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, so, some cute... What? Your time ran out. Oh. You have a time limit. I was limit. talking with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Got distracted. Some cute art too. Ah. Let's see if I can get a page. Ah. Uh. If I can show that. Timer, yes. Yeah. So. Oh. Pull that back a little. Uh, yeah, some cute art there with a little girl holding her balloon floating through the maze. So. Nope. Oh. Oh, you have to. You just gotta start. <laughs> wow. Challenging. Ooh. Ah, ah. Ah. Oh. Ooh. Ah, ah. Oh, mm. look at that. It pops. It floats, it floats, floats up, up and pops. And pops. Oh, that's cute. Because you lose the string. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I have to say, compared to the, Acard uh, the arcade game with all the asterisks for the walls. This is better. It's... I like the lines. I think it looks really good. Oh, my God. I actually think the, the look of it yeah, it's, it's is much more nicer. polished somehow. You want to start at the beginning or go to three where no, you ended up on? This is this is the beginning. Yeah, but yeah. you made it to three. Oh, I know. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Uh, das Richter 71 says, There's something nostalgic about late 70s arcade games. Recently turned on to Boot Hill, Crazy Balloon, I played it, and it's fun. It is fun. I'm going to need the Atari, order this cart from Atari Age. Yes, lines are better than arcade. It just aesthetically oh. more, it's just aesthetically more but pleasing. But it feels, they feel more like walls, too. They do, than the stars the, all over the place. It reminds me of, like, something... I would have programmed on my Commodore 64 yes. when I was oh, 10 years yeah. old. <laughs> yeah, stars for walls. Yeah, it's like, oh, what character can I use for the walls? I'll use a star. Yeah. Stars for everything. All the home homemade games in C64s are stars were stars everywhere. Stars everywhere, yeah, yeah. For the mines, <laughs> for space games, yeah. all yeah. the base, all the it's games true. made in uh, games made in basic were all full of stars. Yeah. And they work fine. You can make them like. Oh yeah. Um, Flash and glow and they they work pretty good as like a built in ASCII character. Yeah. This would improve with real track oh yes. 
with a trackball, this would be really good. I should plug this in and use the trackball. Plug track the trackball ball? in. Yes. You have a trackball? I do. I have a trackball. Things, things I find out. <laughs> I have a lot of peripherals for the 2600. I bought them all in the early 90s when they all dove to zero dollars. <laughs> All the all the flea markets, all the um, oh, not all the secondhand stores. Everybody was dumping all their 2600 stuff that they found in their attics and basements. Is this what you made it to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, already. But there's oh. like there's trackball support, and then there's real trackball oh. support. Um. This would support trackball in the, in the fact that if you rolled left, it would emulate a left press on the joystick. And you rolled right, it would press right on the joystick. Which, which may, may translate well, but it may not. No, we've remade 2600 games with real trackball, not emulate tr joystick mode. Oh, I didn't mean that. Oh well. Too far along. I can get it back to three. No, 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 no. You haven't completed three. You don't deserve Ooh. to be on level four. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> yes, I, I. Yeah, I don't think those could qualify as homebrew, so I can't really play them on the show. <laughs> the converted trackball games. They're more like hacks. Um, yeah, the big lots, one dollar. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. Just hundreds of Atari 2600 cartridges. Um, all the peripherals, lots of different 2600, um, uh, consoles, like the Atari 2600 Junior, um, the 6 switch, a 4 switch, um, did I, I don't, did I finish this one? Yeah, mm. yeah I did. I still need to finish level 4. Oh, why do I do that? Forget that it just starts. We'll do it this time. <laughs> Oops. Oh, went too challenging. high. It's challenging. It's ah, really ah. fun. Ah! <laughs> ah! You can't take too long either. Ah. Wouldn't want this to be set to hard. Ah! Yeah. A warning doesn't work if you're like fully into the wall. <laughs> you just die Im immediately. Ah! Yay! Level five. Yay. Oh, I supposed to says I have, I bet, fifteen ways to play Atari twenty six hundred <laughs> cartridges. Oh, you, I just died. How Atari Junior? Ooh. I do not have any PAL things. I have PAL games, but I don't. Uh... Turn. You play it. Okay. Do you want me to switch? level five, please? I have some PAL games, but I don't have any PAL hardware because I'd just rather just mod, mm. mod mine than, than have an, another system hanging around. Oh my god, I've got too many. It's moving. Oh, it's blowing. I'm like, what is happening? Ah. Ah. Something's blowing me around. It's like slightly moving. <laughs> oh, is that the face? Is that what that I, face is I supposed guess to be? It's, yeah, I guess that's... Oh, damn it. Oh. Again, please. <laughs> Unfortunately, has no way to start you off where you were. That's fine. Oh, oh terrible. It's drifting, that's why. Is it? Yeah. Just there's like a, there's a wind. There's a wind. Ah, oh, wind in the air. 
A wind is air. Oh, oh. terrible. That was just terrible. <laughs> I don't know how I made it through there last time. Mm. Come on. This is like the non-obvious way, but shorter, right? Could go up. Yep, might be easier, I don't know. Oh. Mm. Uh, for original, I only have Coleco Expansion Module Number One that plays 2600, a Star Path Supercharger. I don't have that. An ET. <laughs> What? For original? Original. For the original 2600? Nope. There we go. Oh. <gasps> so close. Ah, oh, I was running out of time. Did I hear the door? Yeah, you may want to investigate that. Might have been a cat. Might have been a Darcy coming in at the last second. Oh. What's our time? 8.45, right on time. Ah. Oh. Oh, original, like original that you owned back when they came out. Damn it! Ah! There's nothing? No, nope, just wind. outside. Yeah. Ah! Can you reset it, please? Four? Five? Five, please. There you go. Oh, oh. terrible. I'm just gonna die. Oh. <laughs> Atari spooked. No, I just, the door is slightly closed and he didn't like that, so. Oh, why is it closed? Not purposely. Oh, I haven't touched this wall yet. <gasps> oh. oh, twice. It's wind. It's very slight, but it's enough that it. It's pushing if you. If you're close. Ugh. If you're close, it's annoying. Oh, oh poor cat wants it open. You can open it. A little bit of wind too coming. Oh, I sat down and it pushed the joystick. <laughs> float, float, pop. Unfortunately, I do not have anything from the 1980s. I did not have... Well, I do have my Commodore 64. But I didn't have any um, consoles in the 80s. So I'm reliving my did you have a Nintendo? lost childhood. Nothing. Nothing. You, you didn't never have a had Nintendo? A console. Never really? had a console. Wow. Until 19... Early 90s when I bought a 2600. You bought a 2600? Yeah, but you, had, you said you and had a friend... NES. Oh, I played you'd, it. You had a close friend who just got every system as it came out, right? Like, oh, you, oh, yeah. I had yeah. lots of friends who had them, but I never had one. Yeah. So, I don't have anything from the 1980s except for my C60. <gasps> ah! Arrgh! I remember the letdown of Pac-Man where everything's wrong except it eats and keeps score. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it Miss Pac-Man, yeah. Oh, Miss Pac-Man's much better. Uh, yeah. And they got everything right. Yes, they did. They did a lot better job on the Miss Pac-Mans. I liked Pac-Man back... Oh, <gasps> I liked Pac-Man back in the 80s. I, I, on the 2600. I didn't really find it like too distressing that it was weird. I thought it was just like, oh, this is just 
the 2600 version. It's fine. It has the dots and, you know, it has the ghosts. A little bit different, but... Oh, it's so hard to get through there! hard parts in this, the beginning and the end. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. You have to get on that swing because that side is lower. You have to go down as it's swinging across. To the, to you have to go left. down really quickly. As it swings to the left, as and it's mid-swing, you have to go down really fast. And it's swinging back from the left because the left hand side is lower. And that's easier said than done. Ah, damn it. You can't stop in the middle of that. You have to keep going. Ah, uh, I need to get it to the end without hitting it once. Because I need that extra little hit to get through. Oh. oh. When you get a warning sound, it gets yeah. darker color. It does. Yes, it yeah, does. you know if you're one down, don't you? <laughs> can't imagine playing this in sudden death mode. Yeah, it's like yeah, one like hit. at least one hit. There's you've got that little bit of wiggle room, so you're not. It's not instant. <gasps> oh, it's so frustrating. Which level? That's fine. Let's start here. <laughs> the beginning. I haven't played. Oh, I haven't. Oh I've been playing God. it like for a lot for a long time. <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating this game. Join the crazy balloon helium heroes. We are offering you the chance to join the select few. All you have to do is demonstrate your skill and control by scoring 20,000 points or more in Crazy Balloon. Easy. Take a picture of your score and send it to us. The first 50 Brave Balloonists to send in a valid score will receive a coveted Crazy Balloon Helium Heroes badge. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> How many points do you get on one level? Like you got 750 on one level. You're supposed to get 20... 20 levels? Not even, like more than that. Look, you only have 11... 1100 points on two levels. Oh. So you'd have to get 40 levels to get that, possibly? That's insane. Has anybody gotten 20,000 oh. points in Crazy Balloon? I think they set that up too high. Only scores from the cartridge version of version of Crazy Balloon are valid. Scores from the ROM image are not acceptable. Well, yeah, because you can just hack the ROM and put in whatever you like and make it look like you got the score. So you have to have it on a, a TV. Ugh. So maybe with Crazy Balloon plugged into the 2600 and show the lead all the way to your TV. Ugh, that's too hard. I'm going to look up the high scores on Crazy Balloon. I don't think that's going to be happening. I think the one is playing into my poor playing. Right <laughs> it's affecting your skills. Yeah. This game is, uh, Lord Monkus, this game is an evil difficulty curve, more like a wall. I is supposed to says, you have been further than I've seen. Well, that's not in one game, though. <laughs> yeah, true. I can't claim that. Burning. Oh, someone's cooking meat. I'm cooking, cooking, burning stuff. Oh, it's neat. Some member of Atari Age has been or did work on a Wizard of War arcade. It's great, but dormant problem was the Atari two-player port. Atari Vox two-player port occupied, but I found it works awesome with a ColecoVision or DB9Y splinter wire. Because oh. I heard, because there's somebody working on a splitter. Um, but DB9 splitter splitter wire, is that a ColecoVision splitter wire? 
You mean the one with two joysticks that come out? Um, so with the ones with the paddles and plugged into one port. Was that the Coleco? No, it wasn't a... Was it a Coleco? The ones where it had a paddle on the bottom and the joystick on the top and the buttons on the side and it was like... I've got some in there, but I'm not going to pull them out because uh, they're buried. Um, and But two of them plugged into one port. So technically, did both joysticks work at the same time? Gemini! You got it, I suppose. To. Gemini, did both joysticks work on the Gemini at the same time? Or was it just for paddles that worked at the same time? And it only took one of the joysticks to work. Why cable so you can use Atari 2600 and just and have the keypad with the original? Interesting. Anyway, what was I doing? Crazy Balloon. 2600, high score. Oh, there we go. It is on highscores.com. <laughs> the top score on highscore.com for Crazy Balloon on this setting is 4,835 points. <laughs> so what that's pretty it? far. 4,835. So I think you'd have to make it to like level 5 on one game. But it's mm. not like 20,000 to get the badge. She's That's insane. I thought like... 20,000? Yeah. But only one person has submitted to this. So take of that as you will. Uh, let's see if any other high scores are on here. There's a tool-assisted one. <laughs> that doesn't count. Because that you can get as high as you want. Oh. Oh. I don't know what score they got in the tool-assisted one. Oh, it's not showing. Oh, YouTube. There we go. Two assisted videos. Oh yeah, of course. It's made it up to like level. Oh my god, there's a lot of levels. 16. So there's 70, 20 levels. Oh, it goes up to level 20. Really? Yeah. And level 20 is insane. And the score they got, wow. with the machine helping them, was 28,000. With the machine helping them? Yeah, so they don't die. Like, if you crash, you can just rewind and play that part over again. Oh, and just that's, keep rewinding, that is rewinding. the most cheaty thing I've ever heard Well, it's, it's, it's for showing the whole game. They use it for showing oh, the whole game. Way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's super cheaty. It's super, massively super cheaty. cheaty. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, just the paddles work when you have the splitter. I like the Gemini. I suppose to say I like the Gemini controller for its short throw joystick. And as a paddle, it's not bad either. No, it's pretty good. Actually, the joystick's like nice and tall. Well, it's not super tall, but it's it's got a good grip to it. It's got some uh, kind of grippy, liney edges to it, and you can hold it really nice because it's vertical, unlike the original joysticks, which were square monstrosities. <clears throat> and the uh, the paddle doesn't seem to... seems really solid, but it is smaller. Um, I suppose says I, I do best on Junior Pac-Man with the Gemini Stick Paddle Controller. Uh, it's been over 30 years since I've used a Gemini controller. It's been like 20 since I've used those. I don't know why I don't use them. I should I should bring them out and put them in my rack just to try them. That shouldn't work because the voltage and port direction set to output. Mm. Ooh, 3,350. Oh, yeah, no, not so good That's now. pretty good. You're almost up to the world record. What was the world record? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You a could get less wine influence. I'd probably, I might be able to beat it. You could it. Set it, uh, send it <laughs> in for uh, second place. Mm. That's pretty good. World record's 48. 48? Yeah, and you got what? 30 something? Oh, footsteps. <clears throat> Yay! I'm going to play one more game after you. I got more points last time. I must have done it more quickly. Yeah. Oh, it's a cat. 
Hi. Hi, Atari. How you doing? Cat butt. Yeah. My first system was a Commodore 64, not system, but computer of any kind that played games. And I got it in 84, I think. Oh, look at that score. Do it quickly. It's speed. Go for the high score. No, this one's harder to do quickly. And you don't get any score till you finish it, so. Uh, I think I'll go for that next time. Oh. It's much easier. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. It's just the ending. Oh. oh. Keep going back and forth. And You're I played pause. on the 2600 on friend systems and in television and coleco like all the way up but i the first system i ever played was the 2600 and of course arcades but um i don't think i played any pong systems i never even saw a pong system in the 70s nobody i knew ever had a pong um just we run out of time oh oh, oh yes yes <laughs> just barely. Good this is job. Hard, though. Oh, that's just level three. I thought it was the one with the wind. No, 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 no. Oh, well, I could get the world record then. Yeah, you have <laughs> to do it quickly, though. Eh. So why did I have so much trouble on the wind one when it's the exact same one? That's weird. Because of the wind. I didn't even oh. notice it was the same level. Weird. Oh. Yeah, I think I could get the world record. I think so. What's with the noisy picture? It looks like your console might have a short one off switch oh, with cable. So close. My turn. Watch out, kitten. 3600. It's the score to beat. If you book it, you get like 11 to 12, 11 to 1200. Mm-hmm. But. I, no, I got 19 on one, Brendan. 19? Yeah, if you go fast enough. Wow. Um, 1925, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. 17 Thomas. on the second. But uh, yeah, if you do it quickly enough, if you follow, if you try to time it to follow the back and forth, uh, yeah. you can do it quite quickly. Um, but you have to be very well, you have to be very well timed. Terrible. Yeah. Oh my God. It doesn't mean you don't have to pause still, but yeah. you, you do get more points the faster you do it. Yeah. <laughs> ah. It's okay. Atari, what do you think? Yeah, good job. Good job, he says. Not good job. Slow, I'd pop two balloons already. Oh. Yeah. Gosh. You're waiting too long. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Hesitating. It's better to do it quickly, actually. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, see, like that. And then you'll get a lot more points. Oh, so joystick close. betrayed me. So close. Oh, you, you can do it now. One more? Okay, good. Atari that was watch. terrible. Oh. Hi, sweetie. Is he being a good cat? He's being so... Oh, he's purring my, in my oh, arms. Oh, that's unusual. Yeah, he's he a happy kitty. 20,000. Yeah, I told or 2, you. 2,000. 2,000. You can do it... If you do it quickly, you'll get a pretty high score. Yeah. But, yeah, see, now you're flying through. That point, you have to pause. Oh. Oh! oh. Damn it. It's doing pretty good. Oh. Now I'm just Now you're just cocky. rushing. Now you're just I rushing. What's the high score? Uh, you still have to pause at certain points. Now that 4,000 doesn't seem as impressive, because if you go really fast, you can get yeah, 4,000 on two levels. It's easy to get 4,000 on, to, to get 
close to 2,000 on the first level, but it gets harder as you go on, right? So Look at that. Yeah, you're almost at four. But the next one's hard. There's, It's tight. Oh, I'm going up here. Nope, really good. There you go. <sighs> Careful. That's oh, a problem. Oh, look at that. 55. Yeah. See, I bit the world record. Is that the I'm gonna really? Have to it was 48? It. Yeah, it was 48. Oh, that, that's pretty that's, low. That's very low. <gasps> Oops. See what's going on? Oh, it's a kid. Yeah, he's, she's just in the out front. Oh. Playing in the rocks. Oh. oh. New world Frank. record! <laughs> <laughs> I will submit that. Yeah? Yeah. Might as well. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I supposed to, do you think my speech is arcade-like? For what? Uh, it says 70 plus sentences in Wizard of War, of which I remember. Insert coin! Uh, 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 uh. I've never, I've never played the Wizard of War in the arcade. Wow. You did that fast, and you only got 950? Yeah, but I, I did get one hit. Oh, not getting a hit. Yeah. Halves your score, probably. Nice. That was really fast. It was really fast. Oh. Um. I did play Wizard of War in the my C64 and 2600 quite a bit, but I've never heard, I've never heard any of the the speech on it. So I'll have to take a look at the arcade game. Oh oh! Bang bang! Oh, oh, same spot. I'm trying to rush a little too yeah. much. I'm trying to beat my world record. Mm. <laughs> oh. That'll be three world records I have now. Impressive. Oh. Can't remember what... Oh, the other one was... The other one's not really a, <laughs> a great record. Neither is this one. The, the other world record was for AVCS Tech Challenge. But, I mean, the people in the competition on the Atari Age forums got higher than me. All they have to do is submit theirs to beat mine. So, just submit it. Submit your score and beat me. Do it. What if I still have it? I doubt it. A, B, C, S, Tech. Challenge. There we go. Atari. Novice. Nope. Still number one <laughs> in the world. <laughs> it's terrible. How about for Wall Jump Ninja? Wall Jump Ninja. Number one. 67 rooms. Number one. Arcade or our 2600 Atari Vox hack with new graphics, stars, title screen. Arcade. Oh, of Wizard of War. No, I have not played the arcade one. I'll have to take a listen. Ooh, 2400. No, it was terrible. No, it's terrible? This is the third level, right? Yeah, I did. Still I pretty good. hit on the second, so my score uh, wasn't very good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I will retire as world ch champion. <laughs> <laughs> world champion. All right. Oh, that was a f that was fun. Four games in one night. I enjoy good. that. It's good to have a, a lot of variety. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you need four games because I knew the up was going to be kind of short because there's not. Yeah. There's it's not much to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, spilt all over me water spilt all over myself 
It's a balloon trip. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for more add-ons because there's a lot more. I enjoyed that a lot. Things from the original yeah. game that can go into this one, like moving yeah. stars and not much more, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can invent new ones. It doesn't have to be the same as the NES. You can add different color balloons, balloons mm -hmm. that move. I don't know. What else? Invincibility. Always invincibility is fun. <laughs> invincibility balloons or, or bubbles and that just let yeah. you go wherever you want. Or let you knock out the little electric. Yeah. Yeah. Or electric a slow lights. down balloon, you know, mm. different power ups. Yeah. There's lots of possibilities. Um, up, fun, but not fun for too long. Uh, it's, I, it's, it's interesting. A, it's a neat and unusual game, but it's it does it doesn't feel very playable. It's like it just no. the same thing. So yeah, yeah. There, there's it's hard to figure out it's what limited. the goal is. You know, it's like you just keep going just through. Go up. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Ball blazer, fun yeah. two player game. Please finish it. Mm -hmm. Please roll and pee. Just please work on it some more. It's that close. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, this game, um, balloon balloon oh is yeah. it crazy balloon yeah 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 great it's great a great game. game super challenging yeah but not challenging that it's impossible just no. challenging that i'm being dumb just and not doing it right just challenging enough that you want to keep playing it because some yeah. games are too hard and some games are too easy and this is this is pretty good yes arena foot i i agree good game choices yes yeah, thank good you tri good game choices i try nice. and put some <laughs> A good mix, yeah. and some interesting ones, and I've yeah. picked two balloon games, mm -hmm. and I see Crazy Balloon in our future for a marathon, uh -huh. getting yeah. through all twenty because you can set the level. So as soon as you, you, you can, it only goes up to five for the levels. It goes one, two, oh, three, four, no. five in cycles. What? So you can only start at the, the first five. Oh, you can't well. go up to thirty because didn't you notice when you hit five, you hit one more, it went back to the beginning. No. Yes. I I didn't see that. I did. Let's see. Six? No. Look. Oh! I thought you would hit up one more. Sixteen. Sixteen. I but I hit up to five and then you hit it and it went back down. Again. No, I accidentally pressed that. Oh like I, pressed, I pressed the game reset thinking that's the start, oh. but it's not. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. So yes, we will be having a marathon. So you now. can go all the way up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but yes. you can't. But you have to pass 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 yourself. You can't set it to level seventeen. You can mm. only set it to sixteen. And then go up from there. Then go up. So sorry, <laughs> that's fun. Mm. We will do that as a, a, one of the marathon episodes. I in think the that'd future. be fun. Just do each level. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you pass it, it's valid. You can go on to the next one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, super, super, super fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really good, good, fun selection. Good, good pick of games and very different. They were all very different games. Yes. And that's what yeah. I like to, to have where, I mean, the two balloon games are balloony, but that was, that, they're balloony games. <laughs> they just have a balloon theme. But well, the up last to one me was amazing. follows the balloon theme and the other one was involved a ball, which is inflated. <laughs> so I would say we're going on an inflation theme Inf today. Inflated ball <laughs> theme. <laughs> inflation yes yeah it's uh, all it's all related you know uh i supposed to says i have to show you more how have i missed this games yes yeah. please yeah, yeah he's he's given me some suggestions okay. of games yeah and send send more um how have i missed this game <laughs> and also arena foot's books as well nice. uh is very helpful yeah in i've already no, I haven't ordered that one. I ordered says, a different game. He says he's uploading volume Cup two manuscript Pow! right now. <laughs> excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. So manuscript means like you're uploading it to Amazon, I'm guessing, for their approval. That means, yeah, because it would have to have the cover and everything as part of it. Yeah. That's awesome. Good job. He said he would be out this week. It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> You've got two days. Yeah. Does Amazon work on the weekend for approval? We will see. We've got no input right now. So. Uh, no, no, no. That's just, oh. that's over there. Oh, okay, good. That's not on. That's what's That's on the, oh, okay. Yes to Amazon. Never mind. Good job. Good job. Um, Very excited. Yeah, so more games. I do have a lot planned. Probably the next show will be the Retron 77 home built-in uh, homebrew show. Um, mm. I don't know when that will be. Because I have to wait for the Retron 77 to be in my hands, which will be in mere days. 
like any day now. I'm its delivery date says Monday, but I don't know what time on Monday or maybe it won't come on Monday. So most likely the latest will probably do the show is Tuesday night. Um for the Retron 77 homebrew extravaganza. I don't know how many homebrews they included on it, <laughs> but we'll play a little bit of yeah. each. Yeah, yeah. That um sounds, to, that to, sounds cool. to go through them all. Yeah. Um the amoeba jump is not on this version. Aww. Which is sad because it was a late edition. So which one? Amoeba Poodle? Boing boing. Amoeba's the third iteration of it. Okay. Because it was And the last one was uh a poodle and the first one was Doodle. Doodle, Poodle, Amoeba. Okay. And Amoeba is the one he settled on. Oh, okay, cool. And that's being included on the Retron 77. Oh, cool. But not the first versions that are sent out, unfortunately. Oh, I see. But it's just an SD card. So you just load it onto the SD card. And of course, it's not going to be the final Amoeba jump either. Unless they're going to hold off till he's finished the game. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you've already played one, I think, homebrew from the German or Polish guy with long hair like me. Oh, the guy who has his own, um, stream? Or four of are included. Oh, so not too many. Mm. So it won't take long. So cool. that's a good number. Yeah. The guy who has his own, um, Atari or video game channel. Um, I can't remember his name. Yeah, crazy guy. <laughs> if you've ever <laughs> yeah. watched his show, he's yeah. wacky, out of control guy. Yeah. Um, but lots of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And some other shows that we have coming up. A an Aardvark work in progress update, unreleased, awesome update version. That's on next Wednesday mm -hmm. with a bunch of very old school, unfinished work in progress. Why didn't you finish this game? Mm -hmm. Game list. Um, and then on the Friday, on the Saturday, cause we won't be on the Friday cause unfortunately I'm busy on the Friday. So on the Saturday, early afternoon, maybe noon, one o'clock, two o'clock, something like that. Oh no, it's going to be, it's going to be one o'clock, one o'clock next Saturday is the Friday show. Cause I'm busy on the Friday in the studio, mm. mixing the audio for my movie which has nothing to do with video games. <laughs> so it will interest none of you. <laughs> um, we're going to be playing overlooked games that okay. didn't get a lot of attention. Um, so we got a bunch lined up. Pickle, Dragon Racer, Road Duel, Give Me My Pancake, and Defend Your Castle. I, I'm intrigued by Give Me Give me My Pancake. Give Me My Pancake! That sounds awesome. France. Okay, different guy. Yeah. Or, oh, France? I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> that in, in reference to and the one after that we're going to do the a star full okay. playthrough remember that game with the pac-man and the cherries and you have to go up down left right down yeah left. i i like that game a lot yeah. that was fun that was a puzzle game yeah it's the kind of game i want to go back play on my own before i play it in front <laughs> of people again because you feel kind of stupid but um eh. No, because it's puzzles. I like yeah. that. Yeah. But it's well, like... Well, then you would just go... Do, 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 you're do, spending done. all this time... Do, 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 do. That'd no, be no, boring. But, no, no. But then you're spending all your time going, maybe I should do that first and that. And it's like you're thinking. But it's bad the other There's way, There's a too. lot of thinking. <laughs> I know this one. I know this well, one. I know that. Then yeah. we're doing all the RAM games. Okay. All the games that are 128 bytes or less. That's crazy. That fit in RAM. Nice. And there's quite a list of them. Yeah. Thanks to um, Arena Foot for passing mm -hmm. me that That's list. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, and then a f uh, Draconian High Score on the 25th mm. for the Homebrew Tournament. Okay. Somewhere in there is going to be the Champ Games exclusive new game coming out that we won't announce till it's ready. That'll be fun. Uh, and then at the end of the year way in the future the best of 2018 homebrew and that's games that were released or mm. work in progress in 2018 cool that will be lots of fun probably two episodes and we won't we'll already be acquainted with these games we'll just kind of go over them again and say what we liked and what we didn't like mm -hmm. and yeah should be lots of fun so lots of good stuff planned for planned the future. out yeah. in the future and even more stuff being planned um, so got a full roster. I like keeping 
things lined up so I'm not like at the last minute because some days I, before I was like, oh my God, I need two more games to put on here. Mm -hmm. And now people are sending in games, mm -hmm. so it's much easier to do. Mm -hmm. You lucky person to get Aardvark to review. <laughs> yes, I am very lucky. I'm very happy that Oscar is um, letting me review Aardvark um and doing an exclusive on that and i get the exclusive as well on um the other champ games game that's exciting too and it's it's a fun one um i had his first zaxxon light game that made into a one-off then he this is i supposed to say then he released space chance was it i even sent him some thank you money for making a cart before it was released Space Chance? Space Chase, probably. Chase. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Nexion 3D is one on the Retron. Oh, okay, so we've we've played that one, which I can't remember much about. Nexion. Uh, hi from London, England. Hello, Virus20, for ne tuning in at the last <laughs> second, because they probably just woke up. It's seven hours ahead in London, or uh, and uh, it's... 9 no, 20? that would be pretty, pretty darn early. That would be pretty dar darn early. Oh, how you get alerts to up my upcoming um, shows is sign up to all the social media. You can, I have a Facebook, just search for zero page homebrew, zero page one word, homebrew another. Or, you know, like us on Twitch. Um, subscribe. Is it subscribe? You can't subscribe. You can, I think. But yeah. anyway, click buttons on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, no, you subscribe. You subscribe. No, it's not subscribe. You have to pay to subscribe. No, no, no. There's, there's, I'm... No, it's like. Unless you are... I'm confused. On Twitch, um, <laughs> to subscribe, you have to have Amazon Prime. And that send, that contributes money. But if you click the little heart, it's a like. Oh, okay. I see it, what you're and saying. And it will yeah, alert yeah. you to it. Whatever it's called. Whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're also on um, Twitter as well. It kind of gets just relays to it. That's not the best way to get it. And I've been very lax on my Instagram, actually. Um, I need to keep up with that. Follow. Thank Follow. you. Follow. Follow. Each subscribe. of them has their own. I know. I know. Thing. It's. I'm like. It's, it's not to... like. It's not like. I knew it wasn't like. It's a. It's follow. got a heart though, right? And it's a follow. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, there's the list. Astronomer. I haven't heard of that one. Muncher 77. I haven't heard of that one. Nexion. I've, we've played that. Yeah. Um, which is uh, quite a crazy game. <laughs> Interesting and crazy. And <laughs> Baby, which oh. I have not heard of no. either. So three out of four at least. That's cool. Yeah. And we'll be playtesting it a bit. I mean, yeah. people do. People have already done two reviews of the system yeah. and what works and what doesn't. I'll do a more in-depth homebrew-centric review of the Retron 77, mm -hmm. um, of what works and what doesn't, and how it works with homebrew. Um, they did. They focused a little bit on homebrew, but mostly just in general where it works and doesn't. But mm. it's a follow. So <laughs> <laughs> hello and goodbye to Virus yeah. 20. Um, but definitely Thank tune in next in. time. Yeah. And always these are posted on YouTube if you're not able to tune in because sometimes the times change. But we're us usually broadcast on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. 10 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. And Fridays either 2 p.m. or 7 p.m. Pacific mm -hmm. time, depending if Darcy is here or not. Well, yeah, I think usually you try. You every aim for second two. week. You aim for two on the Fridays. Every second week is two. Yeah. And every other second week is seven. Sorry, yeah. but it's good to get alerts. It's, it's it's based on it's kind of based on yeah who's available. What's, who's yeah. available? Because yeah. yeah. you know it's always better with somebody else to yeah. to be here with me. And unfortunately, I am not available at two o'clock in the afternoon. So no, yeah. no. Unfortunately, my schedule is more flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So thanks for tuning in, yes. and you can check out a book review I just posted this week as well of two homebrew related mm -hmm. programming books. And an unboxing is going to be out. I'm very close to being done. So it'll be out either this weekend or very early next week. Mm -hmm. um, an unboxing. And then, yeah, I have Wall Jump Ninja review coming out at some point. A Retron 77 review. Um, my once Atari. Once we get it, yes. Once we get it. <laughs> once we get it. Uh, how I put my Atari 2600 RGB board 
into the 2600. I have that all filmed, but it's extensive and takes a lot of editing. Mm -hmm. So I need to do that one. I have uh, my, my setup, um, how the Atari gets from the original Atari onto your screens out there and how frame rates are frame rates work mm -hmm. because some games were giving me trouble on um, it was jumping and mm -hmm. doing crazy things so i've got a lot of skipping frames skipping frames mm -hmm. and doing crazy things that it wouldn't affect a crt but when you're capturing live and it's jumping from zero lines to 400 lines to not 400 but you know a lot of lines mm -hmm. down to 262 and it makes it all like a blue screen like what we see here and then it just cuts the feed out. I'm going to be investigating how, what is going on during that time mm. and how it translates this because the 2600 has a variable frame rate output. It's insane. It's That's not That's really interesting. It's the only system that does that variable frame rate. Yeah. Wow. It goes from like 55 to 62 frames a second. And no, every other system is like it stores a frame. Yeah. It writes the whole thing and goes, yeah. and puts it on the screen. The 2600 writes it in real time on the screen. So you can control. You can play with the frame rates. Yeah. And oh, it actually goes down to 50 frames a second. Wow. Because you can have a PAL. Uh, Atari 2600 yeah. as well. And it depends if you have PAL or NTSC. So I'm going to do at least the first part of that video there's probably going to be a part two because it's a big topic about frame rates and how to program frame rates. are you gonna like do crazy things with your atari so that it looks insane on the screen uh, are you gonna it's give everyone hard. an epileptic fit like <laughs> it's hard to capture that yeah um, but do you know there are certain games that have certain frame rates that you would actually it would problems. translate yeah it would translate some games. and you would see it yeah yeah i'd have to probably point a video camera at the screen Rather, rather than, than go through a the capture, frame meister. Yeah, because okay. the frame meister goes no 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 yeah. i'm not having any of this yeah and it locks it in at 60 frames a second gotcha. and spits it out at 60 frames oh, that's interesting. and just like either drops them yeah or doubles them or does something but it just does not mm. it's not put up with it hmm. yeah but anyway that's coming up too and lots more stuff and always let's plays twice a week so that's it for zero page homebrew thank you every ever so much for all of you tuning in from all over the world um europe and us and canada and london england <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you uh the next show is going to be retro 77 don't know when that is probably tuesday and then we'll see you on wednesday early show it's not at seven we have a sh thing to go to after star wars oh yeah orchestra yes. in concert yeah Woo! seeing it's the first star wars right yeah uh, it's not the a new hope it's a new hope oh god no uh <laughs> it's no it's jar a new jar hope. It's, in it's, symphony it's, it's one where the symphony <laughs> plays along with the with the movie so yeah it's kind of hard to uh say no to that i'm very yeah. excited for john williams so he's not going to be there uh, but no. no no but but uh I, I, you know what his i music. mean his music yes yeah, so yes yeah, so it, it it'll be, be so unfortunately we won't be able to to broadcast but uh, it will be at four o'clock It'll be broadcasting. That oh, day. you'll be broadcasting four o'clock. On... Yep. Okay. On Wednesday. Fair so enough. So yeah. tune in then or watch it on YouTube after if you can't. Yeah. If you work and you're in Pacific time. If you're in Eastern time, maybe you're you can watch it. You're probably okay. <laughs> or you're Lon yeah. in London and you have insomnia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The work on real interlacing is cool. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> have a good night. Good Bye, night. Guys. See you soon. Yeah. Bye from Zero Page Homebrew. Yep.